Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And boy, do we have some new games tonight. Mm -hmm. Three new games, three world premieres, plus an interview with Matt Smith from Chunky Pixels Games. That's awesome. Oh my goodness, we've got him on the line. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> before that, I want to welcome everybody back. We've been off for two weeks, so we're very excited to be back. Look at all these people resubscribing. Resubscribing. They've been waiting. Yeah. <laughs> to do waiting that, two weeks. Just so we That's go right. on the air. <laughs> Cafferman 2D and Dan AVC just resubscribed. Yay, thank you. So we've got Attack of the Petsky Robots. I'm so excited the for this The world one. premiere yeah. of that. Plus two secret games. I've got them written in front of me. I put secret game number one and secret game on oh, number so two. Oh, so even you so, don't no, no, trust no, I, yourself to write no, it on your tablet. No, because I have them written down. <laughs> But I was like, oh, I got to make sure I don't paste them anywhere and <laughs> give away the secret. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, great to see you again as well, Nostalgic. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who help support the show, who are resubscribing en masse, that are listed beside Tanya. That's right. The ones who resubscribed just at the beginning of the show or before we started the show are not in the list, but you'll be there yes. next week. Mm -hmm. um, our, our coder, Atari Age, BR Polka, Buck Owens, Charles and Chad, Charles Whelan, Chive 5, Daryl 1970, Dr. Moo Cows, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, Johnny, WC, Carl G, Kev, Kelly, Croco, Mark Space Inc., Mick, Muse, Mike, Soul, Mace Command, MK Smith, Mr. Zarno, Wood, Mr. Fix, Pack Rat, VG, Koal, Garcia, 70, Render Goes, Repentless, VG, Six Sweet, Smitty B, Socrates, Spiceware, S. Ramirez, Pixel, um, The D Train, Welshman, Tiki, Dan K., and if you want to support the show too and get your name listed and make me read it out every week, twice a week, um, you can do that. <laughs> Just hit subscribe and it's free if you have Amazon Prime. Give all your money to Bezos. Yes. Um, <laughs> or you can just follow us and it'll alert, alert you when we go online or don't give any money to bezos and just watch us yes. on youtube later you can do that too yep and give all your ad money to google <laughs> one way or the other you're giving your money um so we do have some mail we do have some news but we're going to leave that to the end of the show because we don't want to make matt wait on the line too long um so let's get to that let me switch over my notes so that we can, I can see the chat and see all your questions. So if you do have questions for Matt Smith, make sure you type them in the chat and we'll try and uh, get to them. But first, we are going to be talking to Matt. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the show the developer of Atari 7800 games, such as Robots Rumble, Arkanoid. Millie and Molly, mm -hmm. and now Attack of the Petsky Robots, plus two more secret games that you're going to see tonight. Uh, I want to welcome Matthew Smith from Chunky Pixel Games. Welcome. Hello, O'Briens. How are you all going? <laughs> We're good, doing good. Very all of us, well. including the cats, are here to listen today. So very good. It's <laughs> nighttime here, but it's daytime it in is, Australia. It yeah. is. It's early afternoon, so it's a great place to be. So welcome everyone to Melbourne, Australia. It's a uh, long way down here. Once the world's l most livable city, the sports capital of the world. It's a great place <laughs> to live, but now, as Australians do. We like to hold all the titles, and now we're the world's most locked down city in the world. So, oh, fantastic. Well, I'm glad I could catch you at home then. Yeah. That's right. They, they closed <laughs> yeah. our borders, so we weren't going to let COVID uh, in, but it still made it like it has everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's sneaky. Yes. It makes it anyway. Yeah. yeah. But um, we're all back to getting back to normal. So, we slowly, but surely, slowly but surely, you know, <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Caffeman 2D requests that you say that's not a knife, but don't do it. Just don't, <laughs> don't give him the pleasure. No, this is a knife. <laughs> that's right. I did say to James uh, we could have quite a few yeah. Aussie slang words I could just throw out there and see if people can decode what that Spr might possibly mean. But just sprinkle them in yeah. here and there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see if people can get it in context. It looks very nice and sunny. It's your uh, warm time of the year. It is. Uh, because you're in the southern hemisphere. Yes, yeah. we're coming into summer. So summer's down in Melbourne. Uh, we tend to mm. either get huge, big storms like we've had the last few days after some hot days, but then we'll mm. have anywhere over 40 degrees, 42 degrees, 43 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> 
And then, oh. <laughs> yeah, whereas if you go up from Sydney, um, Brisbane, sort of up that way, it's more tropical. So, you know, if you go up yeah. to Cairns, up in the top of uh, Australia, up in Queensland there, it might be, you know, 32 degrees every day. So, or maybe 26 in winter, whereas we'll get down to about two or three degrees in winter. So it's very varied mm -hmm. down here. Yeah. So Yeah, when I was in Australia, I was really surprised how tropical it was like mm. people's perception of tropical it actually was tropical like like humid i went down a river we were, we were canoeing down a river this was and it looked like we were in south america yeah. it was insane this was sydney right this yeah was, just yeah. outside of sydney about a half an hour an hour uh drive outside yeah. of sydney yeah. and it was like where am i was transported yeah. to a different world yeah. so well once you get all on... preconceptions of australia just yeah. gone <laughs> well up in the gold coast which is just out of brisbane um so just over the border between new south wales and queensland they actually have a film studio so a lot of movies mm. you know nowadays are being filmed up there because of the tropical nice. weather and the you know generally good weather yeah. up there all all year round so now my son's that's just coming in true. to interrupt me <laughs> Come on. All the rocks movies oh, can be filmed in Australia. That's yeah. right. <laughs> he always wants to be in the jungle. So yeah. exactly. Now, uh, sorry, the dog's just been. Yeah. The son just let the dog in. Well, so, we've got to see the dog. You have to pay the, the dog, dog tax now yeah. that you've mentioned a dog. Oh, he's a bit. He's, oh, he was locked down for quite a while, so we we, we had to manually oh. shave him. So he's a bit messy at the moment. Oh yes. Oh, oh, he looks just fine. There we yeah. go. Out you go. <laughs> Goodbye. So. so thank you for uh, coming on the show and uh, debuting not just one, not two, but three of your new games. You're a madman. Yeah. You're busy, busy, busy. I, yeah, I get on spurts and I like to try things. And, you know, so some of these things have been born out of um, trial and error. And then I might look at something and go, oh, that looks like an interesting thing to do. So I'll, you yeah. know, I'll maybe start on that. I, you know, Obviously, like everyone, trying to finish something at times can be the challenge. But <laughs> that's the hard part. <laughs> that's right. So yeah. we'll see. So you know, one, at least one of those games you're showing today, I don't think that'll ever get finished. But we'll see how we go. Uh -oh. but, um... <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Because I know which one. Um, okay. This show is a good way to get peer pressure, though. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> to people, finish things. People just go nuts and they'll be like, you got to finish it yeah. now that we've seen it. Yeah. You've, you've taken us this far. Mm -hmm. anyway, but the first there. one up is Attack of the Petsky Robots, which is a homebrew port. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fairly recent game. Um, done by uh, the 8-Bit guy, David Murray, originally, for the Commodore 64 and PET and uh, VIC-20 computers, I originally yeah. think those were the three he originally did it for. Yeah. And, uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, systems as well mm -hmm. that is in development. Apple II, Atari 800, uh, Amiga Plus 4, NES, Commodore 128, X16, iOS, Android, Switch, SNES, Coco 3, BBS Micro, Apple 2GS, MS DOS, and even more in the works that aren't even on the announced list. People have shown little screenshots and stuff of them. It's probably the most ported homebrew game ever. Yes. Uh, in terms of platforms, if not the most game ever mm. in all of history, besides like some text adventures and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, being 6502 based, it's just been. Yes. You know, it's been really easy to have that convert. And there's so many machines back then had, you know, that yeah. processor. So, you know, it's been quite a good a good thing, actually. It's been impressive to see all the different uh, platforms. So, yeah, yeah, all the people coming together yes. and, and uh, kind of testing out the waters of what could be mm. for a lot of games. Mm -hmm. You know, you could make one base game and extend it. And I've seen there are programs for that <coughs> now where it's multi-platform. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but we did talk about it on previous shows Yeah. where they you can make a game in this environment and it you can port it to any of the 6502 That's platforms. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. 8-Bit Slicks was made with it and yeah. a bunch of other 8-bit games. But let's get to the game yeah. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the game. So let me load it up. So 
Sorry, I'm drinking my coffee while I'm here. I know you've got a beer there, Tanya. <laughs> that is allowed. I do have a beer. It is my uh, Friday evening. So. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It's a bit, bit early for okay. beer here. I'm not one of those uh, people who drinks all day. But uh, <laughs> like many Australians. We'll have to start later in the evening so you can join me yeah. with, uh, with a beer next time. Yeah. All right. So here we are, Attack of the Petski Robots. Mm. Um, so this is the title screen. And you, I love the difficulty select. Yes, I was going to say. We, uh, um, where it doesn't actually say this. what level of difficulty you're playing. Mm. You have to judge how... Judge it by the facial expressions of the robot, <laughs> yeah. which is which is brilliant it's and, really and they're very evident which which level you're on out of the three yeah. levels. Um, the so the slash eyebrows, I, I take. Yeah, he yeah. will destroy you. Yeah, I, we're going to start with the easygoing eyebrows. I yeah. think. Yeah, and we'll start <laughs> with point. with map one. With map one, as well. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have the option. Uh, well, I'll cycle through it. Too. Yeah. Research. Yeah. The yeah. village. The islands. Downtown. Pi University, More Islands, Robot Hotel, Forest Moon, Death Tower, and Research Lab. I'll stick with Research Lab. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I am subscribed to the 8-Bit Guys YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So I've I've been following the progress of Attack of the Petsky Robots. So where, where did you first hear about the game? Do you, do you follow his channel? Yeah, no, I'm the same. I actually follow quite a few of those guys on youtube so uh yan yep. Dieter and um uh now i'm just gonna have a mental blank here but yeah there's a whole, <laughs> That's st what whole stack of these yep. guys that i follow and uh so i've been watching uh david's channel for quite a few years and yeah like you i yes. saw it pop up and i thought oh this looks yeah this looks an interesting because it all started from the uh, mini pet he was given um by time yep. mouth software and um yeah, so yeah, you know, I ended up getting one of those mini pets as well because I I don't mind tinkering around with the hardware. Oh really? So, yeah. So, but so I haven't played enough. But yeah, so I thought, oh, this will be interesting, and yeah, you know, I'll be able to play the game on that. And so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll have a bit of a look at it as well. So, yeah. Hmm. Um. So, what was the motivation to make a seven eight hundred version of the game? Had you played? Have you played the? Had you played this game on a different platform? Did you play the pet version? Like you said, you got a pet. Yeah, well, I actually haven't played it on the pet yet, but I've I've got a um, I've got my six. When I grew up, I was an Atari twenty six hundred was the first machine I got, and then I got into Commodore. So a Vic twenty was the first one, a Commodore sixty four, yeah. Amiga, you know, like like oh, most okay. of us. So I've actually got quite a few yeah. few of those machines just <laughs> over here that I'll turn on. So I've played it a fair bit on the Vic 20 and oh, a little bit on the Vic 20 and 64. So, but okay, yeah. So you're familiar with it first before you decided to um, port it. Yes. So you, you played the game and enjoyed the game. Did did you order the the physical uh, copy or the digital? No, copy? No, I just got the digital copy because like everything ordering stuff from europe or america oh. it is like oh, yeah. delivery is horrific prices so normally it's about <laughs> yep. half or more of the, the cost is actually delivery nowadays and it takes it most is. things take you know three two or three months particularly from america to get here <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible on the slow boat yeah yeah so uh <laughs> no, so i got the digital and had a bit of a play around with it and i thought oh this you know this does look interesting from a point of view of you know being Petsky characters and and that sort of thing initially, so hmm. yeah. But um, yeah, and and you thought you could port it over to the seventy eight hundred uh, fairly easily. Well, um, I'm uh, I don't really you know I've always dabbled with basics and those sort of things. So you know I did uh, back in the day Blitz Basic and Amos and all of those sort of languages. You know, I did Visual Basic for work, and now I do um, C c sharp and that sort of thing but you know so assembly you know i'm i'm a bit it's a bit like a foreign language where you can sort of read it but you can't write it that well so <laughs> yeah so I've, but uh, so i had a i was thinking for the last couple of months and i was seeing all these new versions coming up and i thought i'd be interesting to actually have a look at that and um you know see what the source code was like and that sort of thing and 
then I just decided, oh, no, I've, look, I've just got too, you know, I've got too many other things I'm doing at the moment. So I put it off for a <laughs> little while. And then the, the 128 version came out and I looked at it and I'm going, oh, that resolution looks like one, you know, like uh, our 160 mode. And I thought, oh, maybe that's um, something we could have a, you know, maybe we should have a look at that. So I ended up speaking to Mike uh, Revenge, uh, who's oh, actually, yeah. I think he's here now. Uh, so oh, hi, Mike. <laughs> Welcome. So we and we sort of said, oh, yeah, maybe we should have a look and see what we can do here. So um, yeah, so I contacted David and he just sent us the pet version as he has with everybody. So so pretty much what yeah. you're seeing is um, what I went. I just went through and I set up a you know we were I took 7800 basic so we can. Um, have the framework for the graphics and all of that sort of stuff because I thought that was going to be easy and and then I pretty much put in all the assembly uh, went through and you know changed some addressing so that it, it rendered to the our screen uh, RAM that we'd set up and you know as we right. went along everything started to work so yeah so it actually it's look you know Mike Mike would probably answer this differently but from my point of view, it was actually, it was pretty well laid out. Um, it was pretty easy to work out what needed to change. And in the end, I didn't have to change right. too much. So, um, and what you're seeing here on this version is I've just replaced the character, the Petsky character of the of the player. Um, I just yeah. um, got rid of that code and I just put a sprite over the top. So. Yeah, so right. just for the animations and those sort of things. So I just wanted to push it a little bit further um, than than sort of where where it was, make it a little bit more, you know, like the sixty four version or that sort yeah, of. thing. Yeah, some of the other versions they did uh, replace some of the the pet ski characters with sprites, especially along the right hand side and for the character as well. Yeah. yeah. So because of the way it's all rendered, everything's rendering to this this uh, screen RAM. So we haven't sort of looked at i haven't looked at that yet with this version so so what was happening in the background is mike went off and he said well i'm going to look at uh, initially he started looking at doing a framework and that sort of thing and um, but i think i'm not sure we might end up just using 7800 basic all all up now to do sort of that plumbing side of it but um yeah so mike's gone off and looked at how can we maybe get you know the coloring instead of having it in monochrome you right. know, what can we do to make it a little bit more colorful and and 320 mode is you know not the easiest to actually do that but as i said the, right. the 128 version actually sort of showed us that oh, okay we can you know we can maybe do something at that resolution at 160 instead so um yeah so mike's actually the last day or two he's actually uh got something working using some some uh, oh, great. some nice graphics so i don't want to give too oh. much away here because <laughs> yeah that's but color is on the horizon color is on the horizon yes so um, oh that's excellent mm -hmm. and yeah i'm actually really impressed so um he worked with fred and they've developed a new a new cart format um so that we've got access to more graphics area um oh, okay. and you know it just made the you know, simplified the coding in the banking and those sort of things. So, yeah, but it's, it's really come right. together. So we've got all the maps um, compressed down into two banks at this stage. So I'm not sure how that'll oh, work great. with the new cart format, but that was all compressed down. So um, Playsoft, you know, I put something out on the forum a few months ago about compressing maps and those sort of things, and we'll see a little yes. bit of that. That's shortly right. in one of the other games but um we got that yep. got that working and i included that in so you know each map is oh that's great oh i think they're about 9k each so we got that down to oh my goodness one two or three k so we got five maps into each of the two banks um oh geez wow. yeah so and then there's another tile set which in the case of this one we're using the 64 tile set so each version has its own there's a pet tile set um, a Vic 20 tile mm. set, a 64 tile set. Um, but the, 
Mm. Yeah, so um, so it's been interesting to sort of, David actually said, oh, I've never seen the, the 64 tile set working in monochrome. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit of a mix then. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, you go. So, so, so when, when you contacted David about working on a 7800 version, um did he say you were the first to contact him about a 7800 version or do you if you know do you know if any other people had asked for the code before you because i know on his channel he said oh you know there were two other people that contacted me about whatever version but they never got anywhere and then this person came through yeah. and took it to this point do you know if anybody else had uh contacted no, him about 7800 no i'm pretty sure i might have been the first um, but yeah, yeah, he, as, as you said, maybe someone else had a look at it and thought, oh no, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and the 7,800 community is, will be pretty much know everyone yes. in it. <laughs> it's, it's not massive and they all hang out in the yeah. same place. So. Oh, look, you know, and that's like along what, with what you and Tanya do and, um, you know, the forums are fantastic place and, you know, the last. Yeah. three or well, pretty much three years i've been at, around you know the people have been awesome and you know when i set up oh, millie yeah. and molly you know we sort of ended up mike gave me a hand with some stuff and oh actually it was arkanoid before that um and then yeah. robert and steve said oh well we're happy to do some testing for you and you know and now yeah. you know daryl's come along and uh, muddy's lewis has wandered over to oh, 7800 yeah. land so which is fantastic <laughs> oh, yeah. and then we've got bobby synth popalooza doing all the music stuff yep. so all the music yeah you know, so it's a really yep. and then you've got other you know there's certainly others around the forum as well who yep. are very uh very helpful so yeah you know, it's a great yeah um where was there i i know there was an eight uh, already uh an eight bit atari eight bit version of this kit that had come out yes but were, was there a temptation to name it attack of the attack ataski robots well <laughs> we could we certainly could look at that um i haven't yeah we haven't spoken it, it probably David throw off his whole yet. thing of of naming it all the same and keeping it all together yeah, but i <laughs> Oh look, I think that version actually has got that in, in its name, doesn't it? So, but um, oh look, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, got to finish. <laughs> Make it. an alternate title screen for it. Yes. Yeah, you got to finish it first. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, we'll we'll see. So I've just sent it, something through to David earlier that uh, Mike's just given to me about the layout of the the side panel and the, the status bar and that sort of thing. So we'll see if he's got any mm. feedback because there are because of the way that might work there are some limitations on the amount of um sprites and those sort of things we can fit into the line and the you know the dma time right. the the rendering time and all those sort of things is going to be pretty tight on what, what uh mike's plan so yeah but look right, right. as i said to as i said to david i said look mike would have to be you know probably along with bob the two most you know impressive people who know so much about doing software on the platform so you know i don't think we could yeah. find anyone else who would actually be able to come up with you know the sort of <laughs> thing that we're hoping to pull off so and um right. and you should, leaning on them for expertise yeah so we're going to get a new t-shirt for you james and it's going to say mind oh. blowing and it's going to have your head on there <laughs> Oh, perfect. That'll be great. Yeah, well, I do get my mind blown all the yes. time with all the stuff the developers come up with um, that push the limits of these systems all the time. Yeah. And I know the the next game is, is mind blowing and, and is, is incredible. Yeah. And just the work that you're doing and everybody else for the 7800 is pushing it beyond what people could even imagine back in the 80s when it first came out yeah oh i mean it has so much more potential than they they give it credit for. yeah definitely and you know the fact that mike came you know came up with 7800 basic starting that off from from batari basic oh, yeah. like i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing without him doing that you know creating that platform and like it's so much it's so easy to use and as you go along you find you know better ways or different ways to do things yeah. that'll give you more opportunity to to enhance the process so yeah. you know that's... and obviously very powerful 
basic yes. version as well. Like uh, most of the games are made that, that we show on the show are made in 7800 basic. Yeah. And usually think of basic and it's like, oh, you can't really do much. Mm. It's very slow, but it's it's surprisingly flexible. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. And, you know, and that was probably the thing I, you know, with Arkanoid that's really frustrated me is Mike did so much with the controllers there, you know, adding all the different controller process and, you know, helping me to display the tiles, which I took that and used that in um, Millie and Molly. Um, and I've actually, yeah. back, I went back and restarted Arkanoid, but it's, 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 ah, it's sort of okay. getting to the that was, point. That's a later question, yeah, but yeah. Which I think, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to get back to it, but learning new things as I've been going along the last 18 months, it's, you know, structuring the code so you can run multiple processes over multiple frames and, you know, so right. that you give yourself enough time because you can probably do, you know, three or four different frames and then have different things spread out across that. So the second game you'll yeah. show today, or the, the second uh, new one, yeah. that's actually, there's a lot of, there's sort of a mix of different, you know, things operating over various frames and, um, you know, the way okay. that I've drawn the graphics in the background by implementing Mike's um, under the hood process. So, yeah. Mm. yeah so it's... Uh, so we've got some, got some questions from the audience yes. here. Um... Oh, one sec. Are there any features planned for this port that will make it distinctive from the other ones? Or are you going to stay pretty much true to the original game and just completely port it over? Other than, you know, graphics and stuff. Uh, look, I think it'll probably stay pretty similar. It's, um, you know, at its heart, it's, it's a pretty structured, you know, game that you do certain things um, and... Uh, you know, we probably won't change too much. You know, I think the opportunity to, you know, look at doing the, the, the title screen and those sort of things, certainly from the 320 version and put something a bit more colourful, you know, like the, like some yeah. of the more recent releases. I'm hoping, you know, I quickly spoke to Mike. I'm hoping that we might be able to, you know, I'd like to be able to get that map feature in if we can, because I think that's quite, yes. quite interesting. But you know, what Definitely. I would have actually, I think if, if he'd done maybe not the pet version first, but the 64 version, I think <laughs> the ability to actually go to a terminal and access the map would have actually, I think that would have been a better mechanic Ooh. rather than just being yes. able to go in and, you know, see the whole thing when you wanted to. Whenever. Yeah. yeah. That, that would be really cool. And somebody mentioned the searching was very similar to impossible mission, mm. which Tanya mentioned as well. Yes. Uh, when she first There's tried a similarity and what you're, goal is i guess you know yeah there's avoiding robots, the robots there's no platforms attacked. and it's a top-down view but you're searching, searching for, for items, items. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. quite funny it you say that, that feel. yeah i was thinking that you could put the little bar over there the little shrinking bar and just Ooh. very much yes. like, like that <laughs> yes so but it, yeah there's a little nod to it yeah so that sort of does a little loop through and just updates the screen saying searching so mm -hmm. you see that come up along the bottom there when you doing something so the opportunity to maybe do that would be interesting but yeah look we'll mm -hmm. we'll get we'll do what we need to do and get it running and <laughs> and then we'll see if yeah. we can add what i maybe there's a couple of um there's a couple of new maps coming with the plus four version and the, the c128 mm -hmm. version so i haven't spoken to oh. david about whether okay. we can add those in yet either so um, yeah, yeah that, for sure. If you be... have room left over mm. on on the cartridge, are you planning a 128k? Well, because um, uh, that's what it is right now. I believe it's a, Mike's new format is essentially that, but it's going to be 256. Okay. Um, so, but it's the way it works. Okay. I think it, I think it's going to be a 128k in in reference to what the machine sees um, as right. it does it, but right. it's actually going to be you know bigger. So. Yeah. Right. And you can swap mm. over, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. Um, would this be artifacting if played on a CRT? Probably. Because <laughs> there's some pretty tiny dots going on yeah. on the screen. So there'd probably be some artifacting going on if, if, if it did. Um, how many colors are we seeing or shades? Uh, we're only seeing gray and gray and black on the on the background and then the sprite i just did as a different color but as i said yeah. we're hoping that the, kind of the upcoming version will have color 
so and various colors so yeah yeah so i'm i'm i think everyone's going to be quite impressed uh once they see uh see what's coming so um yeah um okay so are you are you planning on leaving the option of two graphics modes like say this mode and the color mode um like david did for the c64 i think um, i think what we'll do there is we will probably you know maybe we'll actually release two versions so we'll have this version right and then we'll have the other one because i'm not sure that will all fit on within the same cart and because of the bank format and that the card yeah. format's probably going to be a bit difficult to have that in both in one sorry in one cart so yeah it's really you're duplicating all the graphics again and having to store all of it yeah 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 so and then it's not always easy so <laughs> yeah no <laughs> so um getting into the control scheme of the game right now there's limited controls and you can only do certain things, yeah. but you're going to be adding it all in. There is an SNES controller, uh, actually an SNES add-on that attaches to an SNES yes. controller for the Commodore 64, plugs into the user port, I think, in the back. Yeah. Um, and there's also one for the 8-bit uh, version yeah. uh, for the 8-bit Atari computers. Um, that plugs into the to the uh, DB9 port, which is really exciting, mm. actually. And I, I'd be buying one even if I didn't want to buy the game because once that's out, you can use the SNES controller for all the systems. That's right. Twenty six hundred, seventy eight hundred, eight bit, just all of them. As long as I'm, I mean, if it's not using up special ports that are only on the eight bit, but I doubt it. Um, are you planning on supporting that controller? Has there been talks with David about that? We'd like to, and I actually I did ask him yesterday if we could get access to the either the schematic of that or if he could maybe send one up to Mike, um, just so mm -hmm. we can get a look at it. Because look, you know what Mike, as I said, what Mike did with Arkanoid to add all the various different controllers into seventy eight hundred basic. Yeah, you know, I think it'll yes. probably be a doddle for him to actually implement that. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> but that's exactly. that's why you're no the, problem. that's why you're the brains of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, and you know, it could be added into the twenty six hundred Batari basic. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Um and just supported like like the Quadtari was yeah. is for the the twenty six hundred now. And I think that would open open up a whole world of control schemes mm. for the whole atari line yeah. and i think that's really really exciting oh look you know this one is extra special with all the buttons like on the um console we've actually got the uh i've currently mapped the select and reset buttons sorry i've just grabbed my uh my <laughs> ntsc model yep um yep. so i've got that for so tanya if you want to press one of those you'll be able to actually cycle through or um james so you can cycle through the different weapons so um no, and she's then, only got the basic weapon oh, right you, now, oh so okay but, you're not running the other version yeah no i was going to save that till uh till soon but we can do that actually right now yeah so but i think on the nest controller you got those two buttons in the middle of the controller um, and they I think they're the ones that cycle mm. it around. So, um, yeah, so we've just got to, we've yeah, we got to try and work out, you know, can we implement that version of us? I also asked yeah. David about, you know, he's planning on having the Nest version to use the Nest controller, which is a lot simpler, you know, very much like the 7800 pad with those two buttons in the middle yeah. so i was sort of saying well you know how are you looking to implement that just to maybe give us some ideas so at the moment you know you are supposed to be able to independently move the the player and fire the buttons yeah. but you know at the moment you've basically got to stand there and you know hope, pray for <laughs> pray for salvation <laughs> that you can actually kill it before it kills you so um <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, and, I, and I guess you, even if that uh, controller add-on doesn't isn't available for the 7800, you would probably have to implement a control scheme that would work with 
a basic two button controller for the 7800 because of they're selling binary versions yes. of the games. Yeah. Um, um, yeah so you'd have to do that anyway and map it out so it yeah. works. So we might, you know, you could look at, so we've got the two buttons ideally there. Yeah. So it might be a matter of double taps or it might be a hold right. and do things, you know. I'd, I'd, right. I'd, it'd be changing the process, but a bit like Millie and Molly where you can hold the button down, you can access the different layers of, so you could go in and right. cycle the weapons and items and those sort of things. And then, you know, maybe sure. you jump back out and start playing. So, you know, we haven't really got to that point. So I've just, you know, I've converted over all, it actually all works. And so you can use the items and those sort of things. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's just hooked up. That's <laughs> the way it's hooked up because we don't have anything, <laughs> any other way to do it at the moment. So right yeah because a lot of them are for computer systems and they have like a plethora of keys mm -hmm. on the keyboard yeah um but it, uh also you could put it on the second controller too for the things that aren't time-based it's like oh i have to do this quick yep you could put uh the book for this the two buttons on the second controller yeah. as an alternate scheme yeah definitely you know. and there's yeah there's lots of scope there to um you know try try some various things and quite often you know the community will come up with various schemes and those sort of things the like with yeah. rocket uh, robot rumble you know there's been a few suggestions yes. on how that might work differently and we tried a few various options as well before we released it so, mm. so it's yeah and, and if it's easy enough you can implement all the options and everybody can choose their favorite that's right <laughs> <laughs> um so you said you're given the 6502 code from the pet yeah. version of the game. How long did it take before you got the basics up and running? I spent, I actually, I, I didn't just copy it all over. And there's, there's actually, yeah. there's two separate processes. So there's the main, um, the main process where you've got the title screen, the game display, um, the controls and, um, uh, what was the other thing? There's one other thing in there. And then you've got the second process, which is like on the screen there, you can see you're in the movie cinema. You've got the, the oh. background. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. So you've got the that, that cycling through. You've got the robots moving. You've got the water moving. Um, all of those things are sort of done on a separate process. And that was, yeah, the interesting thing with there is that was done on an interrupt uh, on the Commodore, on the PET version, the 64 Vic 20. And we don't actually have an interrupt as such like that in uh, on the 7800. So um, mm. so we managed to get it working, but what I've done is started replacing, um, you know, it's quite structured where it'll sort of run through and like you're in the, you know, in the lift there, it'll actually sit in that, that little bit of code and just process and wait for you to do the joystick and then it'll update what you're doing and then it'll come back out to the main, sort of the main loop oh, that okay. it's running. So I've actually converted most of the code, not all of it, to actually run through a loop, you know, an overall loop. So we're using a status to, or a state to track that. Um, and then as it goes through, it'll actually won't, it'll no longer sit there and wait, like with that lift, it'll actually check, oh, is the joystick being moved? No. And then it'll go jump back out. So I've had to sort of chunk the code down a little bit. But what we what so what we're doing is rather than relying on the interrupt to run it at sixty, you know, or fifty megahertz or whatever, it's actually um, the screen drawing is actually doing that for us. So you know, so the rendering is actually keeping it running at a steady state and and those sort mm. of things. So yeah, so that's sort of the only real change that I've sort of made to the code. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it was. Oh, yeah. Andrew, Andrew Davy says, oh. Oh, I was going to call him Andrew. Andrew Davy uh, makes a good point that we should be calling people by their full names and not just David and Mike. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's a million Mikes and Davids. That's <laughs> true. Sorry, Andrew. Um, that's now, Andrew's a, a fellow Aussie up, in, uh, up near yes. Brisbane somewhere. So, <laughs> hello, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um. So how much of the game were you able to keep in pure assembly and how much are, have you converted over to 7800 basic? What's the balance? Uh, well, the only thing I've done is sort of, um, I've pretty much 
98 percent of it's just the assembly uh i yeah. i jump out to do uh the checking of the joystick so i using the 7800 stuff and i'm just sending back a value to say oh was this direction or you know this button was pressed and then that just goes back into the the code that was already there um yeah and then there was the initial setup where i set up the screen ram so that that can be used to display and then we we do the plot map functions in uh, 7800 basic so pretty much at the moment everything is you know full the full assembly so yeah okay so it's and that's you know one of the good things with 7800 basic is it's you know essentially once it's compiled up it's assembly anyway so you can just hook in assembly to you know however you like so you know we've had various little tools and things that mike's developed like the under the hood process mm -hmm. um that um you know is assembly as well so yeah so now it's it's all pretty much still assembly yeah so oh, that's great mm. yeah so very fast yes <laughs> um will there be a you are planning a physical cart for it um uh I've already kind of asked this question. The challenges of putting it on a cart, you did have to um, uh, talk with Fred Quimby <laughs> about <laughs> um, uh, making sure that it works and you can fit it all onto a cart. Yeah, so... Um, so there is a planned cart release then. Well, well, I haven't spoken to David. We actually haven't spoken to David about that yet, but okay. I, had, I was having a little chat with Al about some stuff and he was interested in maybe you know having that available but you know i don't know what david's plans are there because you know right. him producing carts and and true you know, burning roms and those sort of things may not be oh. something he's particularly oh, interested in so lost you Audio. Oh, one second one second i'll get you back here i think you're back okay we're back yeah so yeah. yeah so i'm not i'm not entirely sure what we're going to do there um and because it's yeah because he has to do all the legwork right he has to put it all together and assemble it because he's shown video of him yes. his assembly line yes. on his show before yeah yeah so i, I just yeah I don't, I don't know and i'm not sure he's you know he's obviously had the nest version that he's been looking at which would be cart as well so but has to be yeah look if it's if it's going to be digital then you know like um you know the concerto and the dragonfly they'll need you know they'll need a cart format yeah. update if the if the cart format can be put onto those um mike's yeah, actually that's true. yeah mike's updated um 7800 um, a7800 uh, the uh, emulator to actually run right. this at the moment so that's how we're sort of using it but um yeah it's going to be an interesting decision what he <laughs> does there so we'll just have to yeah. see so what are the what are the next steps in in the game development that you're going to be working on? I know there's quite a bit more to go, mm. um, and and you have a schedule that you're working on, or is it just you know as it gets done? Well, yeah, there's no real schedule. Um, David said that you know I think on his video it was going to be you know it could be six months before it's available. So look, we'll just see. But yeah. look, Mike made some amazing progress the last two days. I was. When he when he sent it through yesterday, when I got up yesterday morning and saw what he'd done, I was I was actually shocked to be honest how quickly he did what wow. he what what uh, he was doing. So and then some more progress today. So uh, yeah, look, I think in the next week or so, um, you know, we'll have a, a a reasonable version that's running very much like this one. Um, you know, with the side panel and you know, he's already got the information area uh running as well so um yeah so i'm not That's sure great. it'll just probably be when it will be so you know this is yeah you know i've sort of at the moment i've sort of done what i can you know mike's the genius in the between the two of us so i'm uh, relying on him <laughs> to sort of <laughs> lead the way a little bit now so um right yeah but look oh. you know everyone's busy so we'll certainly um 
we'll see. Take it as it comes then. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not some big company that's like, we got to release by Christmas or we're not going to make the that, deadline. Right. It's like, eh, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's all fine. So we'll <laughs> see. Yeah. Many other ports that are in progress as well yeah. that are like at, at almost nothing, some of them, and some that are almost done. So there's lots in the pipeline. Yeah. So the, look, the first part, getting the game actually running and those sort of things, that's obviously mm. the core component. But, you know, you've got the title yeah. screen and then there's the game over, a level complete screen, um, that sort of thing that needs to be, will probably need to be changed because that was just rendered onto the, the screen ram like that like the rest of the game oh, so okay. yeah so we'll probably go through and you know make some changes there so uh i think that's all the questions from the chat and that's all my questions so let's get on to the second game all right so and this one do you have anything else to add about this before we move on actually no 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 all, all, all yeah. good <laughs> excellent i was trying to i was uh, trying to throw in a slang word there but um <laughs> I can, we're um oh i've got a whole list of them here and i was going i was having a good laugh at myself <laughs> laugh yesterday looking at <laughs> looking through some looking up the most obscure ones you could find <laughs> yeah so it's like you know crikey mate dead set awesome we, <laughs> I think what we really need is a game that utilizes the Atari Vox for some of that slang. Oh, that would go. be hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be. I'd be stoked about that. That'd be a ripper. <laughs> stoked. We say stoked oh, here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we do very much. So it's Canadian thing. I mean, it all comes back to British English. Yeah, so it's true. That's a big in one. Canada I'm here. A bit, I'm a bit. Hey, I'm Pat a bit. Rat, thank you I'm for I'm a bit devoted about that. Devoed, we don't have that. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't know that one. Devoed? Not Devoed, not no. the 80s. Uh... No, <laughs> not Devoed. De Devo's, Devo's devastated. That's Devo, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. There yeah. we go. There's a lot of truncating in, in, in yes. Australian slang. We were watching something on YouTube about, about slang in different english-speaking countries yes and and a lot of the australian slang it just seems like they just shorten words and we and we chuck <laughs> make, a y make it all cutesy and we chuck a y on the end of or an o a y, yeah. like david you might call yep. you davo or uh, yeah <laughs> there you go that sort of stuff or davy <laughs> or whatever it might be so mm. like like facebook here is called facey people tend to call mm. it facey, facey oh so. my god <laughs> it's all cutified yeah, right that's right yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second game is a secret game that we're going to reveal right now. I am so excited for yeah. this one. <laughs> so let's get it on the screen. Are you Drum ready? Roll. Let's see if Drum could roll. Guess what this was. Here we go. Oh, Carl G. Drum roll. <laughs> Ghosts and goblins. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I love this game. Here yes. is it on the. Uh, NES. Um, it is such an incredible, fun kind of run and gun, I think it was described. Yeah. Ghosts and Goblins was originally an arcade game oh. uh, from 1985 by Taito and Capcom, and it was ported to a ton of home consoles and computer systems, but not the 7800. Mm. Um, so its description is Ghosts and Goblins is a platform game where the player controls a knight named Sir Arthur who must defeat zombies, ogres, demons, cyclops, dragons, and other monsters in order to rescue Princess Prin Prin, uh, <laughs> who has been kidnapped by Astaroth, king of demon world. Along the way, the player can pick up weapons, bonuses, and extra suits of armor that can help in his task. I'm sure everybody watching is very familiar with Ghosts and Goblins oh, and its sequels. It's it's such a fun game. Oh, yeah. said PH on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, everybody's exciting. Well, this is unexpected. <laughs> that looks really good. Cool, cool. Well, look at that. Shut up and take my money, Carl G says. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, let's play it. No sound on this one either. No, no sound on any of the games, actually. No, because sound is, is uh, it's certainly not anything I'm good at. And I'm, I'm very good at taking other people's graphics and using them. I'm no good at... Like, stick creatures are probably about as as far as I can draw things, so... Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've, we've got some very talented uh, musicians 
in the 7800 realm yeah. for TIA and Pokey and and for the other chips that are available on uh, on the on the carts. So I'm sure somebody will step up in no time. Yes. This is a very this one has a very fun music. I love 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 mm. the C64 music yeah. and the arcade music. Yeah. Well, that's um yeah. I was just going to say so, that's so the what, version I grew up okay. playing on the, 64. the C64. Yeah. Yeah, loved it. Yeah. I I just the, the sounds in in the music on the C64 one is are so good. The warbly sounds. Yeah. And, um, so, so what drew you to this port? What, was it the 2015 arcade update yes. that kind of sparked it? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I was, th- I've was. i been toying with scrolling for a little while. And so I just, uh, I wanted to sort of try doing a, you know, a scrolling platformer like, you know, and I thought, oh, actually, this might be interesting to have a go at. And I actually just bought um, Charpad Pro, which is 64 tool um and sprite pro um oh. and that actually had did that have that may have had the map in it or no actually it had the iridium map so i actually was toying with mm. i actually started with iridium and trying to look oh. at the you know the 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 dreadnoughts and how i could scroll those but the way the wow. scrolling works um in 7800 basic we've we've limited to 256 characters as far as the width of the map. So, um, and those okay. were, you know, most of those were elite, you know, two thirds larger than that or nearly double that size. So, you know, maybe 384 or something like that. So I got the scrolling working and I had the ship moving and all of that sort of stuff, but it was just the, you know, that's sort of the width that, that Mike's done. And mm. for him to change that's actually would be quite a, you know, a deal of work because of, you know, the 256 boundary and those sort of things. So you right. have to, you know, write a fair... Constantly be writing to the right or left, I guess. Yeah, so it's... Yeah. And, you know, the old style way of, you know, say on the 64 where you'd, you'd start scrolling it across and then you'd draw the tile down the side and then that would come on the tile. That's probably not... Right. It's probably not going to work on the 7800. So... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so then I sort of looked around and I thought I'll yeah I'll actually I had a, was playing this and I thought I might might sort of bring this on and so and because of the arcade version that came out in 2015 that they split the levels up into widths less than 256 characters so I thought oh okay here we go so you'll see yeah. there that you know you get to the end of the screen and then you go on to the next one Stop. so that's actually a totally different map being loaded on. Um, right. Yeah. So I thought, oh, look, we'll we'll see see how that works. And the, again, the problem with this is, you know, and and what happens like with a lot of the maps on the CMA 100 is that you know to do anything more than the three colours and a single palette is actually hard work. Right. So like this map is still actually in, I think it's still in four or five colours. But um, yeah, 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 a lot of a lot of browns it, and yeah, greens. but it sort of maps it. <laughs> It's a bit greener than I thought, actually, looking at your screen there. But um, yeah, I'll, yeah, color is subjective. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to sort of make it, especially on the seven eight hundred. What I was thinking was I could make it the background a little bit darker, so that it's sort of and make the characters lighter, so that you had um, right. It would they'd sort of stand out a little bit better, and it made it look like it was a you know a dark night, or you know you're going through the through the graveyard in the dark and that sort of stuff. I sort of thought, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. sort of where <laughs> where it came from. So just that scrolling and then when I put that out about the, um, you know, anyone got some compression, that was actually to, to try this right. and, and um, yeah, Paul play off. It's a huge game. There's, there's a lot of levels and yeah. a lot of different tiles that you have to... Uh, uh, keep yeah uh, program for yeah yeah so this this is right on the limit of yeah. how many yeah. sprites and objects I can sort of fit on so I can break it down into various you know like on that first part you've got the ones across the top and then you've got the ones along the bottom and I sort of broke those right. down into you know um, different little groups and um, and that sort of thing but when it gets down to it you can only get you know, 
So all those sprites are basically 64 sprites. So they're 24 pixels high because that fits into the 888 zone of a, a 7800 game. So I can get, you know, we can probably get around nine or 10 of those on the screen at the moment um, before it oh, okay. starts to slow down, which, which it does at various points. So, but I've split, you know, I've split all of this stuff off over various frames and to try and keep it working. And I built a little, I call it an emitter. You can get much closer. System that yeah. actually stores all the ve all the settings for a character in RAM, in the RAM table. So, um, you mm. know, so it all gets set up with all these, you know, these, maybe it gets 15 variables attached to a character and, you know, it all gets read through that process. So... Yeah, so there's a bit to do between, you know, making it move, making the, you know, when the screen moves, you've got to change the position of the character. Um, <laughs> yeah. You then need to do collision checking. Um, you know, yeah. so there's all sorts of stuff going on to try to try and keep <laughs> it moving at a decent pace. So I had more of the um, zombies along the bottom, um, but it's, you know, I've actually pulled that back one. Because there was just it's just too much going oh, okay. on. So, but if you just sat there, Tanya, you'll actually see that they'll you'll you'll get maybe five or six of them all start building up. Um, Maximum oh, okay. area. So yeah. But look, Don't you yeah, I was pretty happy with how it worked. But again, it was just about trying some some different techniques. So I hadn't really done an emitter table before. I, you know, there's not enough variables available to to do it using the variable. So I thought I'll set up a RAM table. And that's why sometimes you probably see things not quite in the right spot because you right. know, particularly that first time it came up, uh, that coin was- Yeah, all, with the shield. Yeah, it was moving around. So, um, you know, I think once you actually get past that, it works okay, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only one we, I, we've seen a plant do that, but and the shield, but not nothing else, mm. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there've been no, a number of conversions of this game, the NES, Amiga, Atari ST, Game Boy Color, and, and the updated C64 version. Um, and it says the ti on the title screen, your game is based on the C64 original and arcade yeah. version. So what elements in terms of graphics, gameplay, and music do you think that you'll be using because the music is very different yeah. in the original c64 as opposed to the 2015 c64 update oh well bobby tends to do all the music and i just say to i'll just say to him do whatever you like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah maybe it's something totally but i haven't actually spoken to him about this one because i again i'm not entirely sure how far <laughs> i might take this one so because as all the way as all, all the, the way, way. <laughs> i think the problem when you do things of the scope you sort of you slowly build on as you code um so you know yeah. you've got a basic plan and you know i've got a structure that i follow now with these these things but you know you're still when you're doing something new like an emitter you're sort of you're still finding out what's the best way to do it um you know how's it going to work how do you split it across so it'll run and then you'll start adding more in and then you go oh, i'm gonna have to split that across frames and yeah, you know, so it's all. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of all. Uh, As you add more, it gets more complicated. Then you fix it. Yeah, you add more. And, yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah. So. One step at a time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I might, you know, if I. Because obviously most people will probably won't be familiar with the new music. No. They'll be more familiar with the arcade. Yes. And the C sixty four and maybe the NES. Oh look, uh, if if, if it was you know if I was going to say I'd take the original music because you know that's the one most familiar to people, but um. Yeah. Oh yeah. I played this so much in my C64. Yeah. And it's it's a challenging game. It's a really challenging yeah, game. It is. It's not very long if you're good at it no. and you get through it pretty quick, but if you're not good at it or mediocre, you just die. Yeah. You constantly well, die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So um, yeah. So the next challenge with this would be if I went to the next level that you've actually got to scroll the screen up and down. So yes. yeah. So that's you know that's an, another technique that I'd have to look at how how am I going to do that and how's <laughs> that going to be laid out in that's memory true. and and those sort of things. Yeah, it's so, a totally different mm. different way of displaying the screen. Yeah. And, and and somebody asked in the in the chat how far along is development. 
and it's just the first level right now just as you said it doesn't go to the next one where you're, you're scrolling up yeah no that's that's just that one and i've i've done the enemy at the end so he'll come in and jump yes. around but i haven't done the collision for that yet um yeah and, and i don't think he fires anything yet either he just jumps around uh yes um, that's right because i think in the got new a, one he, he fires he's stuff. got a yeah. big huge round bullet thing that he or some orb thing that he throws around i'm not sure exactly what it is but <laughs> yeah yeah so because that you know yeah, when you yeah. do these things you've got to say well that's an emit in this part of your process that's an emitter so you, they've got to be linked up and then you've got to say like you'll see the um the uh the, he, the thing firing the bullets the little um what do they call those things the fly trap thing oh. um you know that's oh yeah that's yeah you know, you've got to sort of have that all linked up as well so yeah, you know, so that's all part of it, of trying to get these things to, to fit in. And so Tanya's having a little trouble with the jumping. Would you be <laughs> mapping the jumping to button two for her? Oh, no, I don't think that matters. It's the movement and the jumping that I, I tend to jump straight up, which is just getting used to the controls. Yeah, because the C64 version, they only, they only have one button on the 2600 and C64 and other games that use, like, the DB9 stuff. Yeah. But 7800 has a luxury of two buttons. It does. Um so that's a that's a possibility to do that i suppose as an alternate control scheme instead of up yeah yeah. it's always awkward because you could walk off a ledge accidentally yeah. while kind of going up and over depending yeah like what that. diagonal yeah. you do i must admit yeah. when i you have to get right to the edge yeah, when i've played yeah. this getting across those probably the um yeah. collision checking could be a little bit more accurate there so you, it's probably not you tanya it's the game <laughs> oh i don't know it's, i don't know it's it, a hard uh, it, it, gap it's, to jump it's, over it's, uh you have to be moving to move and jump and you have to move and jump to get over <laughs> yeah. it right so uh, that's right so i think i think it is a little bit of just getting used to the control yeah so that's, so when uh, when i think of ghosts and goblins it, it has it's quite a big game with lots of levels and graphics and uh, um and i looked up the arcade and it's uh just over 300k um, with all its graphics, and the C64, the 2015 version, is 170K, and the NES is 128K. Um, so do you project the final size to be around the NES version, or maybe it's a little bit more because you're following along with the C64? Uh, well, we probably, if need be, I like to use the 128K plus 16K RAM card, which is yeah. um, because you've got that extra memory available to do stuff in, like play music or something like that. So I'd probably have to, I think there's a 256K version of that. So mm -hmm. I think, I haven't looked at that, but I think that's the case. But um, so it'd be something like that. But when it comes down to what you've got to, you know, storing the maps and those sort of things, I tend to try and fit all those into, you know, a couple of different banks so the banks are just set there just to store the data and you go in and restore it right. and then off you go um yeah. so you know and then the graphics so what i did with millie and molly is essentially i've got banks two and three of the game code but that code is exactly the same so i copy i make a copy okay. of that so everything's got like you know it's got the name of the function you know bank two uh, the variables might, if I have a variable for that, might have that on there as well. Um, and then mm. I copy and paste that in and then I rename, you know, I'll call that then bank three. But so you're basically duplicating the code. And then within that, right. you then have the different graphics that you might need for a level. Because once you, right. you know, you, the way that cart format works, you've got bank eight. You can have shared code, shared graphics that can be accessed regardless of what bank you're running in. Um, but everything else, if you mm. have it in bank one, you've got to be in bank one for that to show when it renders. So, yeah, so you can sort of put right. some things in the shared and then you, you have everything else in the bank that you're actually running at the time. So, okay. yeah, so you end up, you know, Mike, Mike sort of said to me a while ago that, oh, you know, you can, you know, just make a copy of your code and just copy it in. You know, that's just sort of how it works. And it's sort of like, it, it, you feel a bit, yeah, works. you feel a bit dirty doing that because it, it's, yeah, it's like, oh, such a waste. Yeah. Ah. But, it, you know, that's how it is. And, you know, that's sort of how I got across that for, for Millie and Molly. So, um, 
the different graphics for that, you know, uh, levels, uh, what do they call it? Uh, style 1, 2, and 3 are in bank 2, and 4 and 5 are in bank 3. So, but mm. all the code's the same otherwise. So, yeah. So that's sort of, I think that's yeah. how you would actually have to do this, that you might have, um, right. you know, the majority of the functionality may be the same, and that's just copied across the various banks. And, yeah, you might have some specific right. things depending on what that level is, and um, right if you're scrolling up or if you're scrolling to the right and left, yeah. that kind of thing. I yeah. suppose. Yeah. So yeah. you can, you know, you can have that code instead of the, you know, the the horizontal code instead of the vertical code or something. So yeah. Yeah. Um. So Carl G says the torch isn't a terrible weapon in this version. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Yeah. Is no. Is it usually worse? Yeah, well, it gets it's terrible. Of, it's is the it worst. really? <laughs> It sort of just drops down, a, you know, half a so screen blip, ahead of where blip. you're at. It's a, yeah, it's hopeless. But I haven't, I haven't put that in yet. So, oh, the thing just I, the, the thing I was really proud of on this one though was the actual movement of the character and the collision with the, you know, like the tombstones. There is actually really quite accurate. Um, and then if you're in midair and you die and it jumps back, it lands properly on the ground. So, like if you're yeah. up on the top, very natural. Yeah. So if you're yeah. up on the top. Um, the top of the um, this bit coming up tombstone yeah that'll mm. actually like oh. if you fall backwards it'll go all the way down to the bottom part of the screen oh i see off the prop. ledge yeah so you know i was really happy with that how that all worked out but uh, yeah it it feels exactly like mm. the c64 version in terms of movement and jumping and being you know pushed back mm. and like tanya got pushed back and fell into the water on the second yes and it bounced of screen. Yeah. like bounced yeah <laughs> yeah no Frust i mean that's frustrating accurate but it's accurate, accurate. Yeah. i'll try it with my stuff i you know i'm very i'm very good at copying <laughs> copying things that other people have done so and i'll sit yeah. there and work out frame by frame how something will work and where so you know like if in the 64 game yeah. i would look at i'd um you know play the game and then i'd i'd go through frame by frame have they moved two pixels one pixel six pixels so as you jump up it might go six six four three two one 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 right. one zero 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 and so, then so it's perfect arc yeah right? so, from the original yeah yeah and i just it because people are playing you coming over from the arcade or the nes or the c64 version they're used to you know, a certain height of jumping, a certain height of ducking, and, and all of this, and when they play yours, it's like, what is, I'm dying, what is going on? So I think it is very important to bring over that feel yeah. of whatever the majority of people are used to. Yeah, and well, that was um, when I was doing, when I first contacted Carlton Hanley for Millie and Molly, he, when I, I sent him a copy of it to have a play, and he said to me, oh, have you just copied the code? Have you just taken my? <laughs> have you just taken my code and put it in? And I said, no, no. I actually just sat there and worked it all out. And he goes, oh, it's, it's very, it's very accurate. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that, that's a nice compliment. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I I keep asking that same question to John Shampoo as well when I play his games. It's like, do you go in the code and 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 analyze the movements of it? He's like, no, I just you know figure it out and. Mm you know, measure it or, or play it by ear. And if it feels right, then it's right. And yeah. it's like, well, it's amazing that you can get that, that accurate feel to it. Did you make it to the end? Oh God, no. Oh, come <laughs> on. Well, we only got a couple questions left. So keep doing it. Keep going. You can do it. All right. Um, so I, I imagine for difficult games like Ghosts and Goblins, programming the last level or the ending cinematics for winning the game is is a little bit different than one second somebody subscribe yay uh does it say miss, miss <laughs> dr mookows thank you yay. for subscribing um it's a little bit different than say writing a song or you know editing the last scene of a film because in the game you have to earn that mm. you have you have to get to the end you have to be as to good enough to get to the end to earn mm. to play that last level or see that cinematic ending, um, is it is it frustrating? Do you see it as maybe frustrating to put that in at the end, or do you see it as something that you're doing something very special for those few people um, that make it? Mm. Like even like on Million Molly, programming the last level, 
that it's like super hard to get yeah. to. Yeah. Well, that doing Millie and Molly was interesting from with that point of view because yeah, you know, you've got the ending screen that's available there. So to actually reach that and see it happen for the first time was yeah, you know, it was quite rewarding <laughs> as because what what happened was when I started working on that, I we we're all sitting there because you know, I didn't have a crack version or anything. So we basically had to play the game right. through all 100 levels. Oh, no. And so oh my God. once we got up to sort of certain levels, then it was like, oh, I'm stuck on this one. And then, you know, like Steve or Robert would come along and, you know, they'd solve it. And then Mike <laughs> might solve a couple and I'll solve a couple. So sort of it, as we went through, you know, we actually completed. We all completed the game together on the on the sixty four version. So to then get to that, <laughs> right. that last and that last level, Rob, um, I think, I think Steve might have worked that one out actually. But um, you know, Ramirez. Yes. So I yeah. was looking at it, going, "Oh, how in the hell are we going to actually finish this thing?" I just I want to get that that <laughs> that screen in, and um, but then I ended up I the last couple I ended up hacking the um, I hacked the sixty four uh, version so I could get to the bloody thing. <laughs> but, yeah. but I don't yeah. know if that's easier or harder than uh, completing the actual levels. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's I think you know as a programmer I think when you can get when you start getting close to putting those things in, it's a bit of a thing to actually keep you moving towards finishing it off. Cause you know, as we know, those, yeah. those last little things can be really painful to push yourself through. You've been working on it for so long and you just, you know, I'm, I'm sort of over it. Um, and that's, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> like John is, you know, how he keeps pumping out games like he does and they're all so good. And he just comes up with a new, a new thing. That's just, you just think, wow! How do you? How does he keep doing all that? And he, com- and he, <laughs> I, but he I don't know. I don't think he all. sleeps. No. Uh, yeah, he completes yeah. them in short order too. Mm. It's it's unbelievable. Um, let's see. Kev Kelly says, "Amazed how good this looks." Yeah, it does. It looks incredible. Um, doesn't doesn't have the evil magician dude yet, or is that on the other game? Uh, the new 2015 version has the evil magician guy coming in. So I'm guessing you're planning on adding all the fun things like the map on this one as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, at whatever's on that 64 version will probably, you know, if yeah. I end up keep working on this, that will end up in this version. So the particular that 2015, um, you know, yeah, that was, you know, so, so much It's like better. the ultimate version. Yes. So, you know, yeah. whatever's in there will, will get done. So, yeah, I've got, like, on the, the second half of this level, you've got the little floating um, little tree Night things. Or whatever. Or yeah, those little guys that yeah. I haven't added. Ghost, yeah. ghost guys. So yeah. I haven't added those in yet either. So, you know, so there's still there's still yeah. a few things sort of get More to, to get to the point. But, um, oh, look, I, yeah. you know. This may still be just a proof of concept and uh, maybe I won't finish this one because I, I was speaking oh. to Lewis Muddy Funster um, not long yep. ago. We were sort of talking about the scrolling and stuff and we both came to the conclusion that Green Bray would be a, um, a, good, oh, yes. a good conversion from the 64 because I love I loved that. That was probably my most favourite game on the 64. So ne- that one was a hard one for me too. Yeah. That, that's a difficult game, but it's very fun. Yeah. So um, you know, I've sort of been thinking, oh, it might be interesting to have a look at that um, because it's <laughs> it's actually probably a little bit simpler than this one because the majority of the time yeah. they're just running across the screen. Um, True. Trying to straight scrolling left to right. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So you don't have both ways scrolling and um you know you could split i could probably split the map it up at some stage so yeah but we'll see you know all these things are <laughs> things you'd love to do but it's you know the time and energy to to actually do them yeah tanya almost made it to the end <laughs> she jumped she jumped she jumped way too early it's 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 uh yeah it's it's deceiving how we'll, short the jump is we'll there. give you this one last oh i've life. only got one life left yeah so, <laughs> so we'll let you play this because i've almost run out okay. so uh, i i think people would be pretty disappointed oh okay yeah it doesn't take long <laughs> disappointed if you don't especially me continue on with this game because it's such an it epic cool. game 
and and it very so well known. It looks so good, and the graphics mm. yeah. look so good. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. just beautiful. Yeah, yeah I'll look. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> exactly. I, exactly. I actually I yeah. thought I was going to have more time coming up, but because I coach rep basketball now, and um, my, okay. my daughter's very busy with that. She's, um, you know, she's under 18s, and she's also playing the senior senior rep basketball as well. So you know, that's that was like seven seven days a week last year oh my gosh um so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah driving her around everywhere and then i've you know I've, they said oh can you come and coach some under 12 boys oh, okay all right i'll i'll come down and help out so i've got that <laughs> on my plate now so that's a lot yeah so I've, I've lost a little bit of time but look we've got mm. we've got these mm. other things that i'm working on first so you know that'll happen yeah. that'll happen before this one but um we'll see oh yeah we'll of course see. this is just the the start the beginnings yeah. yeah but like i said yeah. it's always good to actually you know sometimes you, you do these things to trial a process and you know so i took exactly. this process and i put it into the next one and you know enhanced it yeah you know so there's things i've learned from that that i'd have to go back and change this one as well so because this this opens up the world of left and right scrolling yeah. now well, we for don't have, future games. There's not a lot of scrolling games like this on the semi 100, so you know no, I think it would be nice to have a few platformer type games uh, like yeah, it's that. Yeah, like Bentley so. Bear and the Crystal Quest. Um, not not too many. I can't think of a lot of them. Yeah. Mm. So let's get on to the third game, which is also a secret yes. surprise game. <laughs> Which is also super fun. Oh my goodness, this next game is so fun. Okay. Let's get it set up. Okay, drum roll please. Ooh. For game number three. Night Night, yeah. which probably nobody recognizes <laughs> because this is a, a homebrew port yes. of a newish game. Yes, oh, off the MSX. Yes, it's 2019 MSX game, uh, also been ported to the C64. Mm -hmm. um, Sir Bernard is cursed. The only way he can get some sleep at night is by taking a long walk, which is not easy at all when you live in an enchanted castle. Help the old knight break the curse and get some rest by walking around the castle, avoiding all the hostile creatures that inhabit the walls of Scarkeep. Um, knight, knight is a single screen platformer with a strong classic arcade feel. Race against, against the clock and step over all the tiles in the room, pick up the key and exit through the door to the next stage. So this, th there were a lot of, a, a number of games back in the day where you had to walk over tiles and, and light them up. Minor 2049er was one of those types of games. Um, and people really loved them. I, I love these types of games too. Mm. Avoid, avoid the enemies and, you know, collect all the things on the screen or light up all the things on the screen. I mean, it all goes back to Pac-Man. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Going around a level getting all the things on the level then you're done the level mm. yeah it's nice to have that um, clock that you've got to race too i think that you've got to do it by that, that certain too. time that that too as well and having um you know bonus pickup items that you know either freeze things on the screen or extend your time or give you more shield and mm. all of that is in this game as well yeah and then you have to get the key and open the door a bit like uh, solomon's key except you can't make little platforms in this one <laughs> so uh when did you first run across this game was it on the c64 yes. version that yeah you saw a couple of months ago yeah. i just i saw it on itch itch.io mm. and um, i thought oh that yeah. looks like an interesting game and then you know like um robots rumble you work out that it's actually from an, a different platform so um yeah, <laughs> yeah so this was on the mx X event originally so yeah. um yeah i thought i i don't mind like you i don't mind these little games where you can run around and you know you got lots of levels yeah. but you know you can actually you know you have a finite time to to do them in and yeah so and i just thought oh it's the controls seem quite nice and you know i thought oh, i could probably yeah. probably do that do that i think so <laughs> yeah yeah and you got the controls really tight mm -hmm. on this one they're they're so responsive 
and they feel just right. Like you really feel like you're in control of the character. Yeah. And it just feels really nice jumping around. Yeah. Well, James, just so everyone knows, James and Tanya actually played this a little, oh, I don't know, maybe Quite a month a ago now. And yeah. um, I was still working on the controls. I I actually couldn't believe you fi you actually finished the the first ten levels that I'd done because. <laughs> oh, I love these type of these games. These games are oh, so much my fun. God. Yeah, they're just so fun because they're so simple to understand, mm. and you just you you know you can complete the level. You just got to try a little bit harder. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's so much fun. So it's been a blast beta testing this mm. uh, for sure. And, and finding little bugs and making sure the jumping feels right. And yeah. Uh, so when you, uh, I know for Attack of the Petsky Robots, you had access to the 6502 code for port porting over the game. So when you create a game like Night Night, that's also a modern made game, uh, did you try and contact the original MSX uh, programmer or C64 programmer and ask, ask for the assets or code or logic? or no. do, you, do you prefer doing it from scratch or do you like getting the code or it doesn't matter? Uh, to, be, to be honest, I'm happy to do it from scratch. And sometimes oh. like Millie and Molly, I'd, you know, I thought, oh, that looks like a really cool game. And it's been the same with this one. I thought, oh, this, this would be something a little bit different than the platform you know generally has as well so i then start doing it and then as i get closer to the point of oh okay i think i can finish this then i'll you know i will contact the original developer and and sort of right. say oh i hope you don't mind i've, I've been <laughs> i've been working on this um and give them an opportunity to have a have a look at it and you know say oh yeah that's that's quite yeah. good and you know because it <laughs> you know i think I'm, and so you've talked to the original programmer no, of this? No, not, not yet. yet. Okay. Not yet. So um, well, they'll know now. I hope it's a surpri <laughs> surprise for him. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, yeah. So I just, yeah, I just normally, I'll start these things and we'll see, we'll see where it ends up. And if need be, I'll certainly go and contact the, the person and, mm. and, and all persons. So, and say, oh, yep. look, I've, yeah, I've done this. So, yeah, that was with Millie. I would think they'd usually be pretty happy about it. They'd be like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Oh God, that's great that somebody put my game on another platform. Yeah. Well, the, like with Millie and Molly, like Carlton Hanley's a developer from back in the, he did 64 games back in the day. So to actually right. contact him and go, oh, I know you've just got back, you know, he just got back to the platform a couple of years before, um, before he made that one. And, you know, here I come along and say, oh, I've been, you know, he's only just released his game and, you know, three months later, oh, I've been working on this. I hope you don't mind. So, yeah. Yeah. So he, with that one, he actually said, oh, look, you're going to have to speak to all the, the there was um, the guy that did the graphics who's, he's actually really well known in the 64 scene. There was the guy who did oh. the levels and him and his uh, wife, I think it is. Um, you know, and they, they, he actually still works in the games industry, I believe. And then the guy does the yeah. music and they're all in different countries and, you know, different time zones. And so they all, in the yeah. end, they all had to approve the fact that we we're going to release <laughs> the game and, you know, and when, you right. know, we sort of came to an agreement about when that would be available because we didn't you know i certainly didn't want to impact on his ability to sell the 64 version not that oh, you know, of course yeah. not that the 7800 probably not a huge is, crossover, no and i saw there of, is some yeah and i said to him i said look you know i'm not expecting a lot a lot of sales to be honest uh <laughs> certainly not what you'd be looking at for the 64 but we sort of said well yeah. okay well it's going to be after this time and it's only going to be on cart and and those sort of things yeah. so that it you know, that's particularly that digital side of it wasn't going to be impacted exactly. too much for him. So, oh God. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, look, um, when this when this gets near the end, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look, if the 64 if, uh, versions come out, I'm sure he's, you know, Juan is probably quite clear that, okay, this, is, this will be okay. So, you know, he's given the guy, yeah. that guy, the, the go-ahead to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. There's already precedent for it. Um, Andrew Davy says, "I think an okay port of this on the 2600 would be doable." And I, 
I think so too. It's it, every most of the characters are on their own platforms. On the on the further levels, there are guys that jump between things, but you know they yeah. get flicker a bit and then they go off to their own level. Yeah, there's. Um, but yeah, there's probably once I've sort of implemented levels 11 to 20 but there's a couple of enemies so mm. every 10 levels there's they sort of introduce a new enemy and then as you go through yeah. the the rest of the 80 levels you know they'll say so there'll be one new one each each of those 10 and then they'll mix in the ones that you've come across beforehand so um yeah so there are there's ghosts and you know there's ones that follow you around and there's ones that just sort of jump up and then they'll fall down and then they'll just run around so yeah yeah, so I've still got to, you know, uh, there's a few, a few um, things to get done before I can, uh, you know, call this one done. So, but look, it's got to yeah. this point so far. So, you know, and we've got, oh yeah, um, you know, once you include the arrows and, and those sort of things in there, you sort of end up with, you know, eight or 10 objects per level. So, yeah. Mm. So like with the key, um, the gems and those of the door they're actually sprites that are using mics um under the hood process so they're actually embedded into the screen so um okay like if we go back to muddy's um keystone capers so he's drawing the level and then he's drawing the the um you know those things over the top so they're all sprites yep. that have to be drawn every single frame. So what I did with this one yep. is actually embed those into the screen, into the display, and then I hide them. So I'm not oh, actually, yeah. Okay. So they're basically a background object, rather than being right. a, so all the all oh. the players that are running around their sprites. Um, so right. I'm drawing them each frame, but with the with those. And why not? Because those are the ones that move, and the other ones don't yeah. move. So yeah, so it, was, it makes sense. So it was sort of a way of you know, saving yourself from drawing another, you know, potentially four or five items and they all would have to be displayed at the same, you know, can potentially maybe be displayed at the same time. So, yeah, I thought, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we'll give that a go and see and that worked quite well. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> Mr. Zarno Whoop says, something about this game works for Tanya. She's calmly owning it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I do like this, yes. Somebody says it reminds uh, reminds them. Uh, nostalgic says the layout reminds me a bit of Bubble Bobble, and mm. yeah, it, it does. It's got you yeah. know the levels, and you jump between them, and you can also fall. Yeah, it's it's very close to Bubble Bobble, except you're not blowing bubbles. Yeah. And look, that's it, about it. <laughs> I, if I didn't have to do bubbles, I would have done Bubble Bobble. <laughs> bubble Bobble is a whole other level. There's yeah. like a hundred bubbles on the screen, and that. That'll kill yeah. any system pretty That's much. Right. And I was reading. Se I was 2600 actually, can't do it. Nah. 7800 is like, oh my God. I was reading about the um, the 64 version, which is a fantastic conversion, that one. And they actually, yes. once the bubbles yeah. get to a certain point, they turn them into characters. So they're no longer sprites on the screen. I thought, oh, really? See, that's interesting. Ah. So, because you just can't. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, I know, I know of doing. No. Um, ghosts and goblins that you really you know i'm sort of getting close to the the limits of how many sprites i can show now with this one so you know once you add really? you know normally with the, the three or four enemies and then you've got the two bub and bob if you've got both going and then you've got all those bubbles right you know that's getting very close to you know the limit before you even start showing the bubbles so so changing them into background characters or something that might be the way of doing it oh like the c64 does it yeah potentially so but yeah you know i but i i know yeah i when i was doing this i was thinking oh I, yeah i think that's you could certainly get the character movement down no problem with with what i built mm -hmm. here for that one so yeah but yeah. no i'm not doing that one <laughs> <laughs> no so night night will be your sixth game on the atari 7800 and they've all been ports. Um, is there something that draws you to creating ports of existing games? Or could there be a possibility of an original creation in the future? Have you thought of, of some ideas uh, for original games? Um, I, I'm not an ideas man. <laughs> if, I could put it, <laughs> if I could put it that way. I just, yeah, I've, yeah, always, yeah. I've always found it easier to 
you know, try and bring something to the platform that I can visually see and play that that I can, you know, I don't want to be a copier, but I just don't. I'm just not very good at I. I'm not, I'm not that sort of person. Like some people are very creative, and you know, that's not me. So, um, right. Yeah. Look, you know. Well, there's always a need for ports. That's for sure. Yeah. You all the ones that I love. Like all the games you make are like right up my alley. And I think with the platformers and puzzlers. Yeah, I think with this platform, I think you know, in doing conversions of existing games is probably you know the thing that most people would like. And you know, like you look at what Daryl's done with with Pengo and um, yeah, and Popeye, and you know, you can get some yes. fantastic versions of existing games that can fit really well within the platform. Um, oh, the only yeah. problem with those is they become, you know, they do become a huge investment because, you know, people know them so well. And so you do have to, you know, do them quite accurately. And um, yeah. you, people get very specific about them. It's like, this didn't, isn't the same as this one. I'm mad. Yeah. <laughs> no, they don't get mad. They're pretty cool. No, no. I, I, and I understand that, but it's, you know, that's the challenge. You try and get it as, you know, as close as you can to being yeah. very accurate and you know and that was where arkanoid really just drove me crazy in the end because i just couldn't <laughs> i just couldn't quite get the ball movement right and you know yeah so yeah that's that's why that one's sort of sitting where it is at the moment because i just need to keep working on trying to sort that one out so oh this is interesting i'm she, dead but she's she had a shield and she's dead, and the time ran out, but she's still able to complete the level. Oh. That's uh, very interesting. I don't think that was supposed to happen. <laughs> so something's going on there. Good yeah. thing to look back on. Yeah. <laughs> Found a bug. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to die there. <laughs> um, so Chunky Pixel Games is also the creator. You are they also the creator of the development environment for Atari Dev Studio? Yeah. Um, was was Atari Dev Studio created out of the need for a better way to make your own games? Um, and how has it helped you with these games that you've been making? I was using, when I first started working with Batari Basic, I was using the, um, the editor that was there and I was working on that Tower of Rubble conversion and thank, thank God Deanoid kept, kept working on it because <laughs> I, I think he yeah. was going to stop because I was, but, you know, my version's pretty, yeah. pretty crap. Game of chicken. Yeah, his, ver <laughs> his version's m much better than mine. So, um, but I got to the point that it just wasn't working properly and I'd actually on for, for Blitz, um, Blitz 3D, Blitz Basic... Um, and Monkey and Monkey 2, I actually built a... Just getting her back to stage nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not going back through right. them all again. Yeah. So she can show all them okay, off. Okay, sorry. <laughs> as much um, as I can. I, I, I built a, an IDE for that out of, in um, Visual Basic. And, you know, that was... And I spent years and years trying to update that. But it was just, in the end, I spent so much time trying to update that. It was a... It was a pain in the backside in the end. You never got anything actually done because all I was doing was <laughs> updating that. So um, so when I got to the point of, oh, well, this one's not working properly and, you know, maybe I should try and build something quickly in Visual Studio Code because it was really simple to get the basic IntelliSense working and, um, you know, being able to launch, launch the compiler to compile up the language and then launch the emulator to then run your game. I thought oh, that that would come in handy. Um, yeah, so I, I sort of did that initially for Batari Basic and that's sort of where that ended up. And then I thought, oh, now I'm starting to do stuff on the <laughs> semi 100 I wouldn't mind including that. So I started, so I then included that and then I included the assembly stuff. Um, it's just, it's a bit, That platform, the VS Code platform, is very specific in how you do certain things when you're compiling and accessing files and those sort of things. So you've got to sort of fit within that framework. So I know people would probably like a more project-based process and the ability to, um, you know, define a project and then 
have it compiled up off a you know some sort of configuration would probably be the next step I'd like to do with that. But again, it's sort of now it's again finding time to sort of update that. Like um, Stella had an update out a couple of weeks ago, and I still haven't put it in. And I normally like to try and get those things in straight mm. away as soon as they're released, but I I just haven't been able right. to get around to doing that. So um, and then you know we added the um, the sprite editor and that that works okay it's not the best for the 2600 but 7800 was really painful to actually get graphics into 7800 basic and they had to be very specific formats and and so the editor in that does a, a reasonable job and i use it for pretty much everything that i do so you know i'll look at the graphics and i'll actually draw them up in the editor and save it out so they you know i can bring it back and it's got enough functionality there to do what you know do the very basic uh stuff so yeah so it's sort of a tool that tries to to do what it can to help out i've had you know yeah. some suggestions to copy over some of the other or put some of the other 2600 tools in there like the playfield editor and um right there's a there's another sprite editor in that that you know I've sort of said oh yeah I could I can certainly put that in because you can do you know within that you can open up a web window and access all that stuff no problem so but it's just a matter of finding some time to get around to doing those things so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um that's good oops the dogs good. come from another visit oh no. excellent. <laughs> So I've been I've been on the beta test uh, team, Tanya and I, for Night Night. Yes. Uh, like we said, and um, as you've been developing the game over the past few months, so uh, maybe talk a little bit about um, feedback you get from the beta testing team and how important it is to the development of the game in terms of you know playability and bug hunting. Oh look, you know all the way through, you know particularly Robert and Steve, so Trebor and, and S. Ramirez. Uh, those guys yeah. have been fantastic for, you know, they, they're so helpful and they're always wanting to help. And like the, you know, the rest of the community, you could invite, you know, 20 people in to help with your stuff and they'd be very, <laughs> you know, willing to, to jump in and, and do stuff for you. So, um, you know, it's really, in, you know, it really helps when you, because, it's not the easiest thing to debug this software. So because you, you know, because it compiles it up and, you know, I sort of, I, I'll use the A7800 emulator to go in and look at some memory and that sort of stuff. You know, I spent quite a, like with Millie and Molly doing the rewind feature, actually looking at memory tables and as things are happening. Yeah. So, you know, to have those guys there, you know, having you come in and, offers suggestions and ideas, um, you know, and, and give feedback on a particular way something works. And, you know, look, you know, yeah. in the end, it makes everything better. So, you know, right. Like, you know, there was some things with Robots Rumble that, you know, there was some good suggestions for that. But sometimes you also want to keep to the, you know, the fundamentals of yeah. the game that you, you're copying. So, you know, I could have made yeah. some and changes. Then there is, and there is a stop line where you have to go, I can't, I can't ever add everything. Yeah. There, there's a limit. Yeah. Well, that was like with Robots Rumble, I, either Steve or Robert actually suggested adding the speed run in. And I thought, oh, that's actually right. quite a good idea. And then we had the, you know, because it was all just the... The pro, essentially the pro version of that one is, you know, it's all the, the same speed, but we also added in the beginner version for the same reason that yeah. it actually gives you an opportunity to, you know, learn the game without having to, you know, race around as quick. So, you know, so yeah. feedback with that yeah. is actually, you know, that was the guys coming up with the suggestions and, you know, I think it's really added, added to that game. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and having, Steve Ramirez on your t beta testing team is almost essential. He is like <laughs> the expert at all games. He is. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's so good yeah. at every game he touches. He is. It's, yeah. it's quite an asset to, to have playing your game. Yeah, well, you know, well look, and with that, like, you know, he's very good at that. And then, like, um, you know, Robert's, he's good at, very good at testing too, but he adds a lot from, like, pellets and those sort of things because he's got his, um, you know, he's got that... Um, 
um, that area that he's sort of looking after on the forum that talks about, you know, visuals and, you know, when it's, yes. when it's cold, when it's warm, when it's hot, your console and <laughs> yeah, how the colors. Yeah, makes my head spin. Yeah, like the, you know, the <laughs> greens and, go, you know, the, the blues go to greens and these sort of things. So he says, I'll use this range instead. And like, you know, Millie yeah. and Molly, he basically went through and gave me and said, oh, I think this is the palette that you should be using for this one. So, um uh oh, another bug she found. No, no, no. No, no. What's going See, on? there's a blue one here. Oh, never mind. I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, like what? Where, where's the key? Sorry, Sorry <laughs> I missed that. You. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> um, so I have a question from the chat from Spiceware. Did you ever get the binary number colorization to work? I don't know what oh, that is. Oh, um, that was within the um, within Visual Studio Code. So, okay. Yeah. Um, because what you want to do is with um, the 2600, you've got um, when you do your graphics, you've got the X's and all your zeros and ones to, to, to highlight what the graphic is. So, um, okay. yeah, so what we're looking for is to be able to uh, have, oh, have, yes. have the editor reverse those as part of its Intel or it's part of visually IntelliSense type stuff. Right. Yeah. So you can see visually see the sprites in the code itself. Yes. yes. But yeah, yeah there okay. was back then there was a limitation on on how Visual Studio Code actually can render certain things, and I'm not sure that's changed. But I think I'll <laughs> I'll have to have a look at that. So. <laughs> yeah, because that that would be very useful. Yes. For sure. Yeah, and I look, yeah. I'd probably need to do add a little bit more for the twenty six hundred users out there. So that you know, that would be one that would come in quite handy. Don't neglect those. them. No, no. <laughs> um, there's a question from uh, Atari twenty six hundred dude and Mister Zarnwoop. Pretty much about the seventy eight hundred itself. Um, did you have a 7800 back in the day? I remember over here in Australia, by the time it came out, everyone had moved on to the C64 and NES. And also about the controller. What controller do you use? The uh, OEM Australian Gamepad, OEM uh, Atari US Pro line, or another controller? Uh, never had a 7800 before. So it was only... So we had a 2600 originally, so I've got a twin brother... And we saved up some money to buy that back in, or oh, might have been the early 80s. So we were, we were still pretty young at the time. Um, and we played that thing until it actually blew up. So we had, we, we <laughs> wow. had the double-ended the double -ended cartridges and we put, yep. put that in one Zonaxes. day and turned it on and yep. it stopped working. So I don't know whatever oh, happened no. to that and all our cartridges, all these things that if I knew that, you know, mum and dad actually had all this stuff stored under our house for, uh, under their house for years, and we and they said, right, you've got, you, if you want this stuff, come and get it. So we had, <laughs> you know, we had Vic Twenty Sixty Four, we had Amigas, oh, wow. boom, all just chucked out, and you know, oh. back now. So I've, oh. so I've recollected most of those the last three years, but yeah, but I, yep. the, the Twenty Six Hundred was the first one, and never had a Seven Eight Hundred, and to be quite honest, I. You know, I didn't back in that time. I would. I don't think I'd ever would have heard of it, to be honest. Um, neither had I. Neither would have I. I'd never had heard of the seventy eight hundred back then. Yeah. But now I'm like totally fallen in love with it. Yeah. It's an amazing system. Yeah. Well, and, that was... and obviously the develop the development scene for it is incredible right now. Yeah. And like it's on fire. Well, you know, I I found the twenty six. You know, for me, I just found the twenty six hundred just too limiting, and it was just it was getting frustrated mm. to do something. And I think <laughs> you've got to be a. It's a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> and I think you've got to be a particular. You know, I think you've got to be particularly good at you know minimizing things down and and you know understanding that there's certain things that you can you can do and you know <clears throat> ways of doing yeah. things and that just I thought no nah, this is just too yeah, annoying it's... for me. <laughs> so and then, it's got its strengths and weak weaknesses. Yeah. Its strengths are it can it can draw a lot on the screen, like just every line it can draw something new. Mm. But uh, there's a lot of weaknesses too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's that's again that's well above my pay grade. So well done, to, well done to people like uh, you know like Robert and uh, sorry like John and Spiceware and those guys because you know oh, what yeah. they can do is and Magicians. Andrew, you know what what he can do. 
oh that he's done. my god yeah so we're gonna show something off later that he's been working on yeah so um yeah and then so i i think oh your control the controller uh, question what uh, what controllers do you use i normally just use the straight atari joystick the 2600 oh. variety i that's just got too many great memories for me so I, the the pain line one oh, the, the long yeah. one or, no, no, or the or the eu the uh, european yeah. uh uh kind of nes style yeah okay so yeah I, definitely way better than the pain line that's for sure yeah well i've never had never seen one of those so um no don't bother these, they're terrible yeah. It would be nice if the if that bit could actually if that moved a little bit nicer, and I think it would be actually yeah. quite, it feels just a bit stiff to use. But look, yeah, it's a very short throw. Mm. That's for sure. So yes, yeah. yeah, so that's mainly the the single button original Atari, but otherwise it'll yeah. be this one. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah, mm. we, we use we use a variety of them. Um, well, you've got all the. This good one's stuff our favorite. There. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't doesn't cost quite as much, I guess, to get from the U.S. But sometimes I have to get stuff from Australia or from Europe as well, and I mm. I feel your pain. Yes. it's it's bad. <laughs> um, you've got a oh spammer! Yeah. How dare you, spammer? Let me just kick this guy out. I don't want to be famous. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, let's see oh for for night night i guess the levels the rest of the levels are next and the implement implementation of the uh other enemies yeah that's that's the thing yeah that's... everything else seems really tight like the jumping and the the collision seems really yeah. really tight i just with the collisions i just need to get the edge of the platforms where you fall off just get them a little bit tighter because um, once you go okay. up into the next next 10 levels there's, you know, falling in certain areas, you know, you can miss the platform oh. in the middle. So we've had to do a little bit of playing around with that. The other thing I'd like yeah. to do um, is actually try and slim the sprites down just a little bit because it's actually mm. the resolution is on the MSX versions um, 256 pixels wide and we're down to 160. So everything's a bit sort of... Right you know, a bit larger than it should be. So, you know, I've got, okay. because of the method we're using, I've got, I think they're 10 pixels wide each section. Mm. So that's worked out quite okay. well from a calculation point of view. But, you know, the sprites are still the same width and there's some, you know, some big chunky ones coming up, which are just too large right. for that. So I need to take out a couple of pixels on each one. But, um, you know, right. once we get that sorted out, I think, you know, the rest of the... Creating the levels and those, that'll be pretty straightforward. It's just going to be, you know, adding the enemies and the movements and those sort of things, which will be right. fun to sort out. So so what's the latest on Million Molly? Is uh, that coming out soon or is there a schedule release for that? Uh, Al contacted me oh, about um, four or six weeks ago and said we're still, we're yeah. still in the, the chain. So there was... There was a new okay. cart that, that was being developed um, for the 7800 stuff that's coming out. So I think Popeye's right. in the same, is it Popeye, I think, that's in the same boat and maybe one of um, Muddy's carts, one of his games that right. are waiting for this new cart. And then there's the... The XO probably. Yeah. And then there's the, the um, Fred's Pokey chip and stuff to go with that. So it was just sort of waiting right. for to get all that done. And um, yeah, so... I'm, I'm quite excited that we we finally might get there and um, yeah yeah yeah. So Elle's hoping that we can you know we've got hopefully some nice box and and mm. manuals and things coming from that, which will be very similar to the the 64 version. So um, yeah, Excellent. so hopefully in the new year. But look, you know, L does such a great job. I think he got smashed by <laughs> releasing all those games last Christmas. So. He's got quite a lineup again uh, for whenever it's coming out, like really soon, it mm -hmm. seems, because he's been posting yeah. you know, screen caps of renders of boxes. So yeah. I think it's really, really soon. Yeah. Might be pushing the Christmas release date right now. Oh, I really? I don't think it's yeah. he's going to make it shipping for Christmas, but it, yeah. it seems really like soon. Like a Christmas release, maybe not. Yeah, Christmas <laughs> release, yeah. yes. Look, it's yeah. probably... A, a I, promise of a present. You would say for... <laughs> 
for Al, it's probably been a good, you know, with COVID, it's probably been a good time because people have been sitting at home and, you know, wanting to yeah. buy things to do. So then with all the games that have been coming out, it's been fantastic at the same time for him to go off and get boxes <laughs> and manuals and those sort of things produced That's is probably hard, hard because, you know, those people are under COVID rules and they may not be open and, you know, whatever it might Shipping be. Issues, Shipping's yeah. hard. So, you know, it's sort of had yeah. its good and... And it's good and bad. Bad sides mm-hmm. of it. So yeah, look, you know, I think we're all grateful that of what he does oh. for the for the community and you know incredible. Yeah. So you yeah, know. he 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 holds it all together. He's the the central glue that keeps it all going. Yeah. So yeah, look, <laughs> especially the forums. Yeah. So for me, look, whenever he can get to it, you know that I that doesn't worry me. That's you know whatever's no. going to work best for him. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's always plenty of games that are coming out from him all the time. Like the last batch was only like May or something. May or yeah, mm-hmm. early this year, or so. Yeah. And it was plenty, probably just plenty of time. Yeah, just with that game because we'd agreed that it was only going to be card only, then you know, we're sort of locked oh. into you know, we have to wait for that. So, yeah, so that's that's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, so I'm guessing Attack of the Petsky Robots is your primary drive right now. That's your first on the list that you're going to be working on. Uh, yeah, I think at this and stage, just try and we'll try and get that done, and you know, it, I'll try and help Mike as much as I can with whatever I can add value towards. <laughs> so maybe for the next few weeks or next period that he's working through, you know, getting all that set up, then yeah, you know, I'll probably come back in again and see what I can add there and um you know we'll we'll, we'll take it from there so yeah it's yeah. exciting I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what people think because oh, minds yeah. will be blown James <laughs> <laughs> minds will be blown and I think they were I think they were tonight I, yeah. I I'm really enthusiastic about all three all of three. these games yeah. that we showed uh, big need, big need, fan of Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, I need to work and, on my Ghosts and Goblins game. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I have to start practice. being able to jump over those those and I've fissures been, in the land. Yeah, and, yeah and I've been made a, a fan game. of Night Night. Oh, it's great. I just yeah. love platforming, and that one's a great platformer. Mm. And it's like a puzzle platformer. It's yes. like figuring it's out a slight bit of puzzling. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's Attack really the Petsky Robots is a little bit more puzzle. Yes, because you have to figure out what to do with the robots. So yeah. And it'll be nice, to that in, well. nice to have all the the items uh, yeah, feature into to be it. Be able to use them because yeah. I'm not sure if you mentioned that while I was playing, but yeah. you can't use those items yet. So <laughs> no. that's why I wasn't, you know, just the launching guns. the what is the, the bombs, the bombs and, and all that, and and, so, and that's yeah, all part of that game where you've yeah. got to drag things and put things in position, and then you can blow them up, and then it'll blow up the stuff yes. around you and. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's very strategic. It's yeah, strategic, very, very yeah. strategic. And you can't can... just blast at them because no, you will no. die. You'll just <laughs> die. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so anything else to add before we let you go? Uh, no, not really. I just want to thank you and Tanya for everything you do for uh, the, our community. And, uh, oh, you know, it's, you. it's fantastic that you have, have these days that people like myself can come on and talk about you know what's mm-hmm. going on and you know what we're we're contributing so you know we're very lucky yeah. you, you do all the hard work with the with the awards and you know those oh, sort of things you. which are you know as a developer are very exciting to get a nomination for 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 example so <laughs> yes yeah, yes so, yes but, well there's so it's good it's tough competition this year mm. my god <laughs> especially in the 7800 realm it's ramped up yes so i'm really looking forward to this year for the homebrew awards oh, and yeah. Yeah. hopefully you'll get some nominations and yeah. maybe a win who knows oh. we'll see what the people say that's yeah. exactly <laughs> right but no thank you yeah. james and tanya yeah it's been uh oh. been fantastic what you're contributing here so and uh for everyone well, else you. within the community thank you for uh enjoying yes. you know making an enjoyable place to uh, hang out so yeah yeah well i'm looking forward to doing a lot more of these interview style shows mm-hmm. now that we've got this kind of set up all working and the sound look is good now it's working better now, yeah, I'm, yeah i'm i'm really happy with this and so thank you so much for coming on the show and as and for making these amazing games yes and yes, yes being part of this incredible community oh thank you for having me so and now i'm off to i've got some rellos coming over 
So we're going to have a bar. Uh, what? Have uh, a barbie. Bellas? I've got the esky. I'm pulling the esky out. We're going to have some tinnies. Going to crack a few, <laughs> crack a few what? slabs, and um, just get shit faced, basically. Well, I knew that <laughs> one. That one. I knew. <laughs> Ended on a good note. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sorry, have I, have I fun with your barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, Atari box. We need an Atari yeah, box. That's right. A trans, an Slang automatic generator. Yeah, translator. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, have have a, a good rest of the day. Yes, you too. And have a good weekend. And uh, we will talk with you soon all online. Right. Yes. Thank you. Good have to see good you all. Thanks so much, Matt. Yeah. Enjoy. Thanks, James. Thanks, <laughs> bye Tanya. Bye bye. See ya. Thank you. Bye bye. That was excellent yes. thank you so much such great games to play for being on the show matt <laughs> smith yeah. and such great games to play through it was a uh, good job dad yeah <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of support in the chat yeah, that's yeah, awesome that's good <laughs> um yeah that was a lot of fun and i really love doing the interviews and talking to the developers directly yeah um because before we would just talk with them like on the award show, <laughs> that would be it. And we get like three minutes to say hi and bye. Yeah. Um, but it's really nice doing these premieres and getting questions from the audience yeah. and really digging in deep into how these games are made. Yeah. What they, yeah. How, how, what gets people into doing them too? And, yeah. and what interests them about certain games and porting certain games. Mm. Yay. Oh, the cats All heard right. that. The cats heard that through. All right, who's ready? Headphones. Who's ready? You are. <laughs> are you ready? You're ready. Are you ready? I, guess, I don't think people heard that, but we heard it. We somehow. heard it super loud. So I don't know where that came from. But <laughs> anyway, it's treat time, and it went on the screen. I think so. Okay. Oh, kitties, come here. Let's get the cat cam up. Get Thank you for cam. waiting to. Uh... Oh. There you go. He rang it. Did he? Yeah. Yep. Oh. oh, you're so welcome, Matt. And thank you for coming on once again. Um, we do have some news. So if you hold on, we're going to breeze through the news as quick as possible. Sure, you can talk while the cats are... Oh, that's true. Uh, the first item was uh, in the news. Did you hit it? Did you hit it? No, he didn't hit no, it. No, you need to hit it a little harder. He doesn't know. It's been two weeks since he's had yeah, to get his Yeah, it's been phone. a while. There, there we, we go. go. Good kitty. I don't know if you noticed the quality of the video was really nice. Yeah, it looked sharp. Like really, really sharp. Yeah. Um, it's because I've installed crossbows. Um, let me... Chroma mod. Let me nice. get my notes. So okay. I can actually do the show properly. Um, and I just installed that a couple days ago. Uh, Chroma fix. Um, from Ivory Tower Collection, Crossbow. Um, so he sent me the chip and I showed it, uh, the board, and I showed it a couple weeks ago before we went on break. And it has done wonders. It mm. has cleaned up the picture quite a bit. Like the edges are a lot sharper. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with the upgrade. Mm -hmm. Quality was great, Esmeralda says. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was really good. Um, so thank you so much to Ivory Tower Collection for sending me that. Mm -hmm. Slash Crossbow slash Jesse. Mm -hmm. It's got too many names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crossbow's Chroma Fix for the win. Yes. And okay. there you go. Good done? Kitties. Good. Now I can Good switch kitties. over to show people oh, the things. He's like, don't run away. Don't no. run away with my bell. I want to do more. <sighs> so let me show. As Ramirez, uh, that chroma fixes gold. Yes, here it is. So I posted it in the Zero Page Homebrew Club on Atari Age mm. forums um, on my kind of 7800 continue, continuation of my 7800 modding uh, thing. Um, so there is the board. You can see the Ivory Tower collection symbol there. Mm. It's actually really, really simple to install. Like, so simple. There's my, that's how big it is. It's quite small. <laughs> um, so there's the UAV. You have to have a UAV to put it in, um, I believe. Um, so there it is. And then you, it kind of goes right on top and matches with the UAV because it taps into the plus five and ground on the board of the UAV. Then you solder it on the back. And there it is. See it attaches right through it. 
Um, and you just chain, take out one wire from the UAV, put it on the uh, color input, take the color output, put it back into where the old one was, and that's it. It's really, really, really simple. Uh, there are some glitches in pesky robots. Could that be related to the UAV mod? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, di I didn't see them. I saw somebody pointed them out, but by the time I looked at the screen, I think they were gone. I saw a couple little glitches here but, and But I mean, there, it's nothing... fairly early in the process, but so... It's still early in the development. So... Matt can take yeah. a look at the footage and yeah. determine whether it was my system or, or the game. Or something else. Yeah, yeah. or something else. Yeah. Mm. Um, so there is the uh, color output display from the 7800 test program. It gets a little muddy in the darker colors like it gets really weird and muddy which is like not even on like, the edges but like right in the middle like hazy of it. almost it's really strange i don't know what that's from oh, okay but at the top it's very like, sharp yeah like i mean this is zoomed in quite a bit but it's quite sharp mm. um but you see down here it you can get a little fringy mm. but uh it's it's a hundred percent better mm -hmm. it's so good um Virtual Rubik's Cube by mm. Andrew Davey. Uh, he posted this on November 22nd after we went on break. Looks he amazing. started making a Rubik's Cube for the 2600. Mm. And he started off with this. And he's using his uh, special display format with the play field. And using the multiple lines to draw different colors. And he released one, I think, today. A new update. Let me go to it right here. Nice. 12 hours ago. That yeah. looks so cool. And uh, you can download it and it runs on real system. And it e even explodes oh, the yeah. Rubik's Cube so you can see it flat. So you can see all the, all the all edges. All the sides. So right now he's got it so you can rotate the whole cube along the uh, horizontal axis. Mm. And you can rotate the three different uh, layers. Mm independently along the uh, horizontal axis um, so you can't solve it but no he's next going to be working on the different like the z-axis and the y-axis so you can rotate those mm -hmm. as well um yeah crossbow says very cool effect reminds me of the animation of technical diagrams that go into exploded views mm. where they go and and it has and if you saw it actually exploded it not just like it took the colors and place them well, out. Well, kind of spread it, spread it's, them out, and it's unbelievable. Yeah, what Andrew is able to do with Playfield. Very cool. Like this is just Playfield. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like, yeah, I wouldn't be able to solve it even with all the axes available. Yeah, all the axes. Yeah, those axes, those axes. Ch I chop it up. <laughs> yeah. But you can download that and play around with it uh, yourself uh, from the forums. Here I'll. Mm-hmm paste a link in there sorcery it is he is a magic man with the play field uh, and the cats have left now they've like, been eh. they've been pretending to sleep since the beginning of the show like is the bell gonna ring is the bell gonna ring <laughs> <laughs> now they've eaten they're gone they're gone they're like <laughs> sorry i just found that very very funny i bet eventually the they'll be time. like okay we get fed and then it's like an hour before we get fed again yeah. <laughs> that means we can leave for about 45 minutes and then come, and come back. back and start waiting yeah they're, they're smart um <laughs> they are very smart so let's see oh yes this is very exciting retro hq has been posting recently about uh they they make the jaguar links uh and the neo pocket and uh also the lynx oh jaguar drive lynx drive and neo pocket drive and now they are working on the 7800 um game drive as well and what that is is an sd based multi-cart oh. like the concerto and the dragonfly cool. so we'll have a third one in the running very soon and he's been, uh, they've been posting on the on Twitter, Retro HQ, mm -hmm. um, screenshots of, well, this is his announcement. That's that's now all the original commercial games running on the 7800 game drive on NTSC, including built-in Pokey support. I'm aiming for dual Pokey and YM2151 support for the final release, so it will be compatible with Dragonfly games as well. So you, 
So there'll be even more support for games that support dual Pokey plus uh, the Yamaha chip. Cool. So that will even make Even more it, development. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll make it much easier and much give more confidence to people developing from all those sound sound cards. Those sound, yeah. Um, but also on top of that, I mean, he's posted some screenshots. Let's see if I can go to them really quick. And they're just screenshots of games, but... There another 7800 multi-card. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, another 7800 multi-card. Uh, there we go. That's black and white. I don't know why black and white. There we go. That's it playing uh, Burger Time. Mm. Oh, there's a good one. Ball Blazer using his uh, game drive. Um, but he's not only <laughs> making... A 7800 game drive he is making an rgb mod for the 7800 finally one's coming out for the 7800 so top top quality wow output for the 7800 nice. soon so i'll be modding my second 7800 <laughs> to uh to have yeah. rgb output oh nice uh finally getting somewhere with the 7800 rgb the video output from uh, maria is so jittery i've actually given up trying to use it and i have you have instead done maria's job for her and assembled each scan line from the display list being read in so this one's from october and he said he was he developed the 7800 rgb because he was working on the game drive mm -hmm. and he was just getting fed up and wanted a better output for it i need to be in on that rgb testing <laughs> definitely contact him i think he would be very interested in um, probably working with you because you've been you've done so many installs for 7800 mm. um, that you should definitely contact him, Jesse. Teasing us for Vicky and Vicky, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's a good game. Um, so let's see what else. Look at this one. Oh, while we're off, Game of the Bear was uh, announced. What? Is, oh no no he's going after the earpiece no, no, no. <laughs> game of the bear was announced for release by um so atari age this I love is the artwork on that yeah yes That's vh so said sees game newest platformer for the 2600 nice yeah yeah it's yeah it's got 50 levels it's very very exciting um so there are a lot of games coming up and i've been keeping track of them Ones that have been announced for release coming up. Mm -hmm. um, from Champ Games, Robot War 2684 was uh, released. Um, it's not available yet in the Atari Age store, but it was released um, personally, I guess, at, the, at that expo. So it's coming out very soon. Um, Ladybug Arcade from Champ Games, December 2021. Gorf Arcade, uh, Q1 2022. Turbo Arcade, August 2022. Possibly at PRGE. Kicks late 2022. Um, from Atari Age specifically, Game of the Bear, late 2021. All these I'm going to read are late 2021 or whenever this dump is coming out of games. Uh, Robot War 2684 through Atari Age, Uniwar S, Galaxian, Mr. Yo Yo for 2600, Spies in the Night 2. Wow. Uh, Popeye for 7800, Dragon's Descent for 7800, Wizard's Dungeon for 7800, Danger Zone for 7800. And then in the next batch, in early 2022, Pac-Man uh, 40th Anniversary Edition. Nope, 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 pst, nope, 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 nope. Uh, EXO. <laughs> and then uh, Million Molly. Can you deal with that bad cat? Uh, Million Molly, as we just heard, uh, soon. So maybe that'll be in 2022 batch mm. because it has not been announced by Atari Age yet. Um, Good Deal Games recently released Talvisota at uh, CORGS and Columbo, Columbus, Ohio Retro Gaming Society Expo. Uh, Pack Rat VG is releasing Larry the Lemon late 2021 and Ram Pong late 2021. Mm. So that is the list that I am keeping. That's I'm a lot. Yeah. <laughs> probably going to put it in the Atari Age forums. Intellidus for the 5200 Razor Cat game oh. set. Oh, yes. Not on your list? No. Oh. Is that in this batch? I will add that in right now. Looking forward to getting that one. 
because I'm working on my 5200. It's upstairs. I haven't started yet because I wanted to get the 7800 done for this show. Gotcha. So we could show the ga games off really nicely. Mm -hmm. So I was absent for a show and we to move it. Mowing duties. <laughs> Damn grass. Yeah. Well, it is summer there. So. Yes, very true. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. 5200. And wait, 2021. Uh, Andrew David, it looks amazing, amazing. The Rubik's, uh, the Rubik's demo mm -hmm. is incredible, especially the exploding particles of Rubik's cube going everywhere on the screen. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, okay, what else? Oh, let's go back to the news. Oh, I have a package to open. Oh, packages. I forgot about that. Let me do that first. Yeah. Two packages. <laughs> Too much stuff. Um, very tiny packages. I think they're just like adapters or something. I can't remember. They're not labeled but with a company, so I might have bought them off eBay or something like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just super boring stuff. So these are... These are adapters... Now they're called, I can't remember what they're called, they're PAL, uh, <laughs> PAL coax adapters to RCA. That's what these are. Because I bought an, a, a coax oh. to HDMI box. Yeah. So I can just plug, without a VCR, just plug uh, some of the coax old systems, like a unmodded RF base 2600. Okay. Just straight in a uh, converter to HDMI. Okay. But the... Big screen, please, someone was saying. R, the R... Oh. No. Yeah. yeah Thanks, Fitoko. Fitoko. <laughs> um, but the RF connector on it was, like, super weird. And I'm like, this doesn't fit anything. So I had to do a lot of research, and I found out there's a RF PAL-style um, connector. And so I had to buy those specially. And now I know that. <laughs> um, so that's I got two of those because why get one? Why get one when you can get two? Yep, for the same shipping. <laughs> and they cost next to nothing. They're just pieces of metal. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the exact same thing. More, more of the just same. Just a different, different type. Oh, this, yeah, this is like, yeah, different type. This is like PAL to NTSC coax adapter just to have all adapters i've got boxes and boxes of wires i can i can and adapters because <laughs> you never know you never know what you're gonna need <laughs> um you guys need a blue screen behind yeah, you so you yeah. can underline the gameplay screens as you're playing presenting yeah i've thought of doing that actually yeah. um and having like the interview behind us as well <laughs> Or, that would be a little weird. Or the gameplay. The gameplay or, would be cool, but I don't, uh, I don't know. You can't have enough adapters. That's for sure. I I don't know if that's a true statement. <laughs> I think you can have enough adapters. But like <laughs> the width of us right now, if we had a screen behind us. Yeah, it would work. It would be pretty small. Well, no, you would have you really small in the bottom, like a lot of a lot of Twitch. Oh, like a blue a blue screen. Blue not... screen, and then you're in the bottom. Your little outline. I've thought of that, but the room isn't big enough to move us forward, and have a blue screen without shadows. Well, you shadows. just shrink us. You shrink us down no, no, to no. the corner. Yeah. Just 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 have a blue screen oh, like yeah. itself. Our room is not very big, unfortunately. No. Because yeah. I mean, it's possible. Maybe. You could. Yeah, because I do have a blue screen actually, because we use it for the Atari Awards. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, I could yeah. play with it. I could try it out one day. That'd be interesting. The, f the sofa would look yeah. like it's floating. Yeah. <laughs> We're but, on the sofa in the of the Atari, and but that I, actually would be pretty But cool. I like having the game completely separate. I know, like, because then, because you always end up covering part of the game, right? If yeah. You, yeah. And so that I can use that footage, like, mm -hmm. later for anything I want. Yeah. Because it's perfect. Yeah, like, that's true. Unobstructed, 60 frames a second. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Paint the wall blue. That's a way, that's one. Yeah, that's some people do that. Now, so. would we paint it blue or green? I think I'd go for green because I don't have a lot of green. I don't stuff. have a lot of green shirts. Becomes a problem on St. Patrick's Day, but you know. Yeah, yeah. you'd be holes in your shirt, and you'd be a floating <laughs> head. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 
Yeah, whenever you uh, see stuff on TV, things are actually really small. Smaller. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Smaller than you think they are. Like yeah. if you go to TV stations and stuff, it's like, this, this is it. I remember. Because they use wide angle lenses Yeah, and stuff. years ago go going to the Conan, the late night with Conan and Brian. This was probably in like 1994 or 1995 when like the first year he, he was on the air. Yeah. And I was blown away by how small his studio was. <laughs> like I, when you picture, when you picture TV studio, studios, you think... Huge. huge massive massive audiences you think like like a theater mm. and and it was not big at all it was teeny tiny we the audience is directly was directly behind um the max weinberg band or whatever it was called yeah. and like you could touch them like like i was in the <laughs> front row i could like touch the musicians they were that close to oh us my goodness. and uh, not that i did but um <laughs> please but, do not touch the musicians yeah but <laughs> I, I i was just surprised because it felt so small it smelled like it felt like you were in almost like um uh, a classroom mm. so anyway it's just kind of neat. There's quite a the the cameras and the wide angles deceptive. really really deceptive. So, but yeah, it's this room is not very big. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Um. So shows Look coming guy. up. Look at him. Yeah, he's cute. Are you cute? Yeah. I think that's the end of the news. Yeah. Yeah. Shows coming up. So we did this one, which was awesome with Matt Smith. Mm. Uh, next episode on Tuesday, we're going to play some 8-bit games uh, that were released recently and, and some, fun, some fun ones that we haven't played on the show before. Um, and I'll probably do it after dark on that day, if we have time. Play some Ricky and Vicky. Now that, because the last time we played it, we didn't have good controllers. We had pain line controllers <laughs> per line. Mm. Uh and it was terrible and it was hard to play mm -hmm. now we have pro, pro you know proper controllers it will be good to play that with two two players yeah, 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 it'll yeah. Be a lot of fun i think so i'm looking forward to that uh pang yeah, yeah. It's, oh i love pang so good that's one yeah, of your so favorites yeah Gakek, which is i don't know where they got this name from but it's uh bomb bomb jack on the atari 8-bit which mm -hmm. is a super fun game you go around the screen and mm -hmm. touch all the bombs Oh, I have a personal message. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go to my personal message. No, no, I was going to say you might want to close it, oh, but that's okay. Oh, it doesn't show what it is. Yeah, no, no. Um, and Castle Defender, which is a de castle defense yes. game where you do yes, that. Yes. And it's it's really fun. And, and barnstorming. Uh, barnstorming, which is a port from a 2600 game, yeah. Activision game, to the Atari 8-bit uh, system. Oh, which cool. Is, and it's really good. That's cool. Um, oh, Pang, uh, your little guy along the bottom. There's big bouncing balls on the screen. You shoot the bouncing ball, it splits into two smaller balls. You shoot them again, smaller. Shoot them again, tiny. You don't get hit. Don't want to get hit by the balls. And you have to, when you shoot you the tiny one, destroy them. Yeah. Shoot the tiny one, it disappears. And you have to do that. Yeah. And you get different weapons. Ones that just go up. Ones that stick to the ceiling, and the ball Lock can. Lock the ball. The yeah. Ball disappears if it hits it. Um, you get freeze things. A whole bunch of power ups. And yeah. There's ladders to climb and. It's really, really fun. Pang is like asteroids as a platformer. Perfect. Yes. Perfect description. Yes. It is exactly like asteroids. Yeah. It's so funny how some of these games just go back to the old games. Yes. Where it's like, this was the first game to ever do that. Just like I was referencing Pac-Man for Night Night. It's like, yeah, you're going around the screen. It's true. Instead of collecting pellets, you're turning things different color. You're, 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 you're changing yeah. the sidewalk color. Yep. yep, and if there was little dots above each of those platforms, mm -hmm. those sidewalk pieces, it would be the same game. Mm -hmm. You'd be going all over the place, and you, yeah, sort of so like, like Astro Smash, yeah, because they, they I mean, break similar. apart. They break they apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they bounce like balls. So you have to yes. duck under them and avoid them, and yeah, super fun. Yeah. Um, and then the next Friday is not next Friday. It's next Saturday. And we're having a very special day for mm -hmm. the release of Zero Page Homebrew the Game. Uh, release and cartridge giveaway. Um, and uh, Darcy's going to be here for that. And you're going to be here for that. Here. Yes. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. So we're going to have to figure out ways to give away five copies of the game. Mm -hmm. Cartridge copies. Yes. Yes. And they'll be signed. Yes. By all of us. Yes. 
I don't know how the cats are going to sign them, but we we'll, might figure a They'll way to do that. just nose them, you know, squish their <laughs> nose up against them. Yep, rub. Yeah. Rub their spit on it. Yeah, yep. rub. Um, and just to point out, it's on a Saturday. Yes. It's on the Saturday, not the not, Friday. Not the Friday, and it's uh, midday for us here. Yeah, so it's noon. Yeah, psst, psst. noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you're on in some weird part of the world, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, you but, just click uh, on it to find out your time. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, I'll, really? I'll oh, you. I Maybe didn't know. People don't know that, know that, I guess. But if you click it, it tells you what time the show is on. Oh. 12 p.m. Friday. Nice. That is incorrect. Uh, oh, it's 12 p.m. Today, It, it right assumes now. it's today. I don't put the date in there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, chewed label. Yeah, there yeah. Maybe yeah. we can get the chewed just manual Just rub a little bit of their cat DNA on the surface. That's right. You can yeah. clone our cats. Clone the... <laughs> have your own Atari. Yeah. Oh. And Pixel. Oh, but you would have to play the ding, ding, ding treat time like yes. multiple times a day if you do that. If yeah. you clone him, he won't be happy if you don't. Because it's part of their DNA. It's, <laughs> it is. It's, it's right. It's ingrained not learned. Response. It's not learned. It's... No. It's, it's, yeah. Um, then we have another exclusive world premiere, Tomahawk 777 for the 2600. That's an arcade port. Mm. Uh, then we're having another exclusive world premiere the day after that. I think it's a Friday. Uh, Ninjoso, uh, along with a bunch of other games from the same developer that I didn't even know about. Uh, Armadja, uh, Tiro Tango and Kitten Catch. Kitten Catch. Uh, Kitten Catch is, I think, by a different person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's that's a fun one. Yeah. Um, and then uh, nothing for that one to be determined. And the 21st. then the twenty first, and then the holiday homebrew special Yay! on uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve midday. Midday. Yep. Because I off. am taking the day off. So yep. and I'm sure us and everyone else has later in the evening plans so yeah so for if those around, if you're around yeah but can, we're uh, gonna do it a little earlier in the play day, some so. uh, yeah. holiday games with us christmas Yay. salvo junior pac-man snow day and yes. i obviously need to find a few some other more. things yeah uh, clone atari so the Cl clecovision expansion module or the intellivision expansion module. <laughs> could be either one or it could be a gemini which is also a Cleco. please make christmas salvo say ho 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 on the atari box. definitely definitely <laughs> yes. i'll have my atari box plugged in yes uh, then way in the future, we'll be, uh, revealing the nominees on January 25th, 2022, and then playing through all the nominated games mm. for the Atari Homebrew Awards, including the new category of the Atari Lynx, emulated, I don't have a Lynx, mm. and I definitely don't have a Lynx that's been modded <laughs> for output. Mm. And then on February 12th is the Atari Homebrew Awards presentation. Mm. And there's a whole bunch of... Oh, there's an unannounced world premiere maybe this year, most likely at the end of December. You don't want to miss that one. That one's really cool. It will be announced beforehand what it is. Okay, but, but you don't know exactly yet. when yet either. Don't know so. when. Late December. Late December, okay. It's super awesome. It's for the 7800 as well. Very cool, very cool. It is super, super cool. Yep. Uh, Alrighty. Yep. And a bunch of other stuff. And uh, yeah, we're done. Um, glad to be back. Yes. How was your How was your couple weeks off? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did a bunch of work on movies, writing, mm -hmm. movies, planning movies. Uh, modded the seventy eight hundred. Did some paperwork. Organized my papers that are paperwork. sitting over there. Yeah. 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 Didn't get to as much as I wanted to, but I've got an un unending list of things to do, so I never. <laughs> Never get through. Getting those. a links taken care can be remedied. Oh, mm. yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I want a links. I don't know. This <laughs> room is very full of things. So true. Very very full. <laughs> Maybe a links. There's some really cool games for it. Mm -hmm. Usually, what happens is I, I investigate the games and I go, oh, these are actually really cool. Mm -hmm. and then I want the system, like with the with the Atari 8-bit. It's like, oh, now I want an 8-bit system. And I got the Atari XEGS, got the 7800. Um, yeah, I got the 5200 modded. And mm -hmm. now I want a Jaguar Jaguar, as you well. were talking about wanting a Jaguar. That's going to be hard to No, I don't have a Lynx right now. No. No, no I've never had a Lynx. So I think the only oh, handheld we have is the like Game Boy. 
like the for, th- for 3DS. Retro, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for retro and, and current. Yeah. 3DS. 3DS. And now the Switch, I guess. And the Switch, but that's to me, is a hybrid. So It's a hybrid system. Yeah. So I'd never really had handhelds as yeah. a kid. Lynx is more affordable yeah, than the Jaguar. I'm sure. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. But I, I think I could probably wait till PRG next year. To see to if look, you can find something. To look something. for Jaguar and yeah. Lynx, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Neo Geo Pocket Color for life. <laughs> That's very cool, yeah. Mm, Neo very Geo, cool. yeah. Ugh, expensive. Yeah. Expensive stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it, I think. Yep, we'll be back with more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Tuesday. Yes. Back to the regular schedule. Tuesday? Not not Friday? Uh, today's Friday. Today's Friday. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, it's hard. I, it's been a rough week. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. It was great show and great games, mm. yes. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesse. You have a good weekend, too. Yes. Um, do you prefer Link's One? Well, I don't prefer either. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea between the two. Yeah. Um, yep, we'll be back on Tuesday, and we'll be doing regular shows until the Homebrew Awards, and then we'll be taking some time off. After that. After that. All right. So we'll be here for a long while. Yes. So you don't have to worry about that. Yep. Um, Yep. So have a good weekend, everyone, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye.